Alrighty, welcome back to the midnight show down here at uh, Times Square, the Sunbet Poker Tour. Hey, yeah, we just uh, spoke to Peter the Weasel out there, and, and the guy's got the most American twang ever, baby. Yeah, love you, Peter. Yeah, Peter. All right, folks, well, getting back to the action here. Uh, certainly looking forward to some incredible stuff coming through from this uh, feature table. Um, Chris, do you enjoy your break? Yeah, it's good to stretch the legs and, uh, you know, catch up with a couple of guys. Just talk something else but poker for the last hour. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, a lot for, for the viewers out there, you don't know us. Um, we are the commentary team for the Sunday Poker Tour. To my left, we've got uh, Jamie McCarthy to... On the far left, we've got uh, Christopher Dean. Welcome, you know. Um, my name is Nick Garia, and we will be returning to the action shortly. And uh, certainly, you know, for us, we've got to try and have some fun up here. You know, we'll try and keep it as lighthearted as possible. Uh, the stream is going live in about 22 seconds, and you guys are going to see uh, some pretty cool stuff up there. Blinds are going to resume on 10.25. And as soon as we have a chip stack update for you, we shall pass that on to you as the viewer shortly. And just a reminder, late ridge on that uh, day 1A of yeah, the main right, event right, is right, up until 10.30 this evening. And uh, do please come down. I see there is a satellite happening in the background there. They managed to get a two, two full seats for the first satellite. And this, I see the 7.30 p.m. one is also busy. So I expect to see potentially another two seats there. Um, so, yeah, ready for the action for the ladies and gents out here. I see, see we are down to six tables. So, yeah, action to ensue. Let me tell the viewers what you used to get your power back. What did the Greeks summon? They've go found my mute mic mute button unmute button. No, just a nice little fish and chips for dinner with my man Nick and Chris, of course. I might need another Red Bull later, coffee or something. But uh, yeah, a, little, uh, a, a pick me up as they call it. Yeah, yeah. What what do you do for your to get your energy back, Nick? Mate, I just go out there. I take in what I can get, and uh, <laughs> certainly, Jamie. Oh, so be nasty here next to me. You nasty, nasty, nasty man, you. Are you looking for your personality? Yo. Yeah, bro. That's what happens. Shots fired. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Jets, um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I just had a little gander on, on uh, pokernews.com, and if you go up across there, you can find the live hand updates for you to go look at. That's uh, in depth, proper to the T. And if you want to stay up to date with all the finer details of what happens within the hands on day 1A of the main event, on pop it. over to Poker News, search Sunbet Times Square, and you'll find it. Yeah, it's. It so cool looking up at the board here you know i think they're doing this for marketing purposing purposes christian here uh, an incredible uh, journalist and blogger um giving us up-to-date uh, hand action and um, people are uploading their own um stacks to the actual uh, statistics of the whole tournament and yeah just it, you know this is the benefit of having an international partner <laughs> like poker news, you big, know, man. we get such yeah, cool I technologies see. in, no, and um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, this is this is what we live for, boys. This is this is what we need to use our technology for. This is what the phones are, are using nowadays. We can literally just scan a QR code that's brought to your table, and you put your name at the bottom so that the journalist that's walking around knows who you are, can report on your stack. And uh, we get up to date feed from Christian Zich. Zich. Is that how you pronounce it, Christian? 
Zitcher. Zitcher. Zitcher it is. There you go. The man is so awkward. He's busy typing there in his journals and he's listening to us whilst we're doing this broadcast. Uh, that's just, he is a talented man. So please do go to the Poker News website, go look at the tours and go find the Sunbet Poker Tour where you will find the 2024 Sunbet Times <laughs> Square main event. All right, gentlemen. Jam packed table here. Some decent action before uh, the break. <coughs> There we saw uh, Merwin at supper. We sent our condolences from South Africa, um, but we did remind him that the South Africans still beat the French in the World Cup, and we are still very proud of that. So keep trying, mate. We love having you at the tour. Please do not stop for any means because we love the international flavor and we always welcome it for sure. Right. Over to Chris for the action. Yeah, so uh, Fayad is uh, in middle. Yeah, uh, makes it 55k to go. Looks like he's getting folds. Because he's just kind of flat there, coming out of the big. Apparently, we're playing till 10 at 10 o'clock. Aren't we going to finish? Up to the players, I don't know. 65. 65? 65. Yeah. Right, Bayard opting to go for 65k here. Another small bet sizing. He's opted for that a lot recently. What I know. The cold. Then you play at home. And he gets through. Anything else you want to see, Lamb? You want to see the other Guys, the 10. Use my glasses, Dwayne, yeah. Sorry. Let him go. Uh. Oh, yeah, taking a little stab there at uh, Lamb across the table, going, Lamb, is this okay? That's after Lamb had a uh, cool idea, or what at least he thought Small was a blind, cool please. idea to have the cards exposed on the feature table of the mystery bounty sorry if i struggle to find my wits there gonna have to liven up the energy here a little bit <laughs> jamie is uh, horribly distracted he is yawning and uh, oh he's actually gonna give us a hand in mob update That's that. <laughs> yeah well i'm just scrolling around on hand and mob looking at these guys um your friends out there. Right, the Oki's under the gun, yeah? yeah? Well, Jamie uh, finds us there. Enjoy. Info? Shall I Windows find Oki? Oki, you stay Yeah, here. let's see. <clears throat> that gets out the way. 65, so Was on the button. Pocket sixes. Like we're going up. All right, so Moaz is flattered there. King four five, two diamonds. Six is Moaz still in front. Let's see how Oki navigates the spot. How many were nine? Seventy. Yeah. Seventy. Seventy thousand. One was, and it gets it through. Nice. So some of Oki's recent notable achievements: I uh, came fifth uh, in the South African Club Championship in November in Cape Town. I finished 8th at another event, Super Stack, also in Cape Town. And in Joburg, in uh, the end of October, he came 4th in the B-Roll One Life. Not bad, yeah, not bad, yeah. Yeah, some notable results. I mean, 
cementing himself as a solid player yeah. in the circuit. Yeah, he's running super deep. Yeah. How many players are left in, in the high row at the moment? <laughs> Down to two tables. Yeah, by the looks of it, still some notable names in there. Emmy's there, Clayton's there. Yeah, yeah, Alright, Nick in one position here. 55 big blows effective. Ace five of clubs. We're going up. 55,000. 55 is the bet. 8-5. Yeah, and blinds are starting to ramp up very quickly. As you can see, we're on 10k, 25k, 25k. The ante. So stacks are effectively getting shorter as every level progresses. Yep. And we've seen a lot of eliminations uh, in the last level already, and we should see a couple more this level. Right, so Tim's opted to come along with his 8-5 of hearts in the hijack. Interesting. You're blind, where are you? Yeah, no, you're next to be blind, but you're moving too fast, so you better come, you're going to the yeah, other table. The Okay. They're coming along. I'm not sure if I look at my card or not. You must have. Right. Queen Jack Jack. Two spades. Okay. Let's see what happens here. Oki checks. Nick looks like he's putting together a C bet of some sort. Like we missed that. He did check. Tim's betting 75k. Yeah. If you show a bluff here, you'll create uh, <laughs> big things. <laughs> Love. Always getting, always getting info, eh? Mate, that oak puts a, a lot of dealers and tournament directors and spectators on tilt. <laughs> he loves it. He loves always tasting the apple cards, you know? Right, there's a short. Don't interrupt the Nick. If you look at the other table, Emmy's over there, Rudolf. Dead big blind. Dark, Renette, Alvin, Clayton, and Eben. Looks like we are missing another player there as well. I get that for you. <laughs> Yeah, also another notable player, or Robert Carley over there. Just, uh, <laughs> jump again. <laughs> yeah, I could potentially be doing. Uh... No, actually, you know what? I'm not going to assume anything because I know I saw him in the satellite making a deep run with his two seats available. I'm actually going to call him over here and ask him. Just ask him. This is the beauty of the box we're sitting. We could just pull players aside, have a little chat chat. Bit of chat over these boys. Big shout out goes out to the Fries Club tonight. Uh, please, Fries, jump onto the comments there. Like, subscribe, and, and just give us a shout out, you know. And your boy Jamie here itching to yeah. come home. He's really upset that he's missed two sessions already. And uh, that he is potentially losing his lead on that leaderboard. He is genuinely concerned. I'm just thinking of defending like 9 3. Oh, Branson. Oh, wow. You are in trouble. Big one. Big trouble. <laughs> you could hit the yeah, dude. I'm genuinely <laughs> concerned. <laughs> no biggie. I'll get it back in a jiffy, my friend. 
that's gonna be my I don't know, game. you know, there's a couple of young talents coming there and uh, you certainly can't make any assumptions there. That's the same man, Why don't you give a flex like whilst you're on camera there? Give us a nice little yeah, flex to the Yeah, for the Frost dub in the middle yeah. here, Jack. Yeah. Amy McCarthy heading up the log there, boy. Yeah, boy. Yeah, so shout out to the brothers there. I hope they listen to the stream. It would be nice to see them all listening and giving a little comment there or two, you know? Yes, sir. Yeah, guys, we're at that uh, interesting stage of the tournament. We're looking at the chip count there. One misstep, and uh, it's either you doubling up or going home. Yeah. Yeah, so looking at that picture there, a lot of people will say, oh, there's still a lot of blinds in play, etc., etc. But surprisingly, this is getting short, you know? Moaz Ghani there with the biggest stack sitting on 61 bigs. Whereas a lot of the tournaments we've seen when we get to final table, that's the stack average. Here, there's still two tables to go, and it's only 61 bigs for the, the biggest stack in the field. Uh, certainly not comfortable, and the pressure is starting, definitely going to start uh, tallying on those players. And if I'm not mistaken, Moaz is the reigning champion of this event from last year. I can pull it up. I cannot confirm or deny it, but uh, Ateku here in the middle is going to suddenly do that for him. Right, Mirage opening to 50k. Was he's coming along? Hockey on the button reduces. Small blind gets out the way. Then with King Eights, he makes the call. Yeah, so exactly a year ago in uh, in Pretoria, 7th of March, 2023, Moaz came first at the high roller. It was a 40,000 Rand variation and he cashed 617,000 Rand. Yeah, so Moaz looking to add another high roller title to his name to take home a million and uh, another trophy. Jeez. Seven of Diamonds on the turn here. Sam and Moaz both have gut shots. 35. Not really enough. It's still 50% here. Interesting, Chris. Right, SM taking the lead here. 75. Okay. Moki getting sticky. Making a decision here. Nope. It's just ops not to. Easy game, huh? It's better. It's something. You take this. Yeah. Yeah. Smell it. Two, two, five. Thanks. Get through. Something. By two to five, get through. <coughs> Question for the people out there Does anyone know if Jamie McCarthy can no. karaoke? No. If you know the oh, answer oh, oh, to this question, please do comment and like the post. The post we put out there. What post? This this post. The stream. Stream. Sorry, I don't have the lingo like the millennials do. Uh -huh. All good, my friend. That's why we have you here, Jamie. Thank you. Yes, right, sir. Really. Was he plus two yet? King Queen suits. Okay, 25, 25, let's see what op, what sizing he goes for. 60. That's for 60. Two and a half. Yeah. Lumpjack 9, gets out the way. Oki, not going to take part. At that, at that stack depth, I actually just prefer just a normal QX, I think. Yeah. 60 to up with that. You know, in case you get Nick. raised, you can always fold and use the minimum. Yeah, Nick opts to defend here, King 3. 
severely dominated. Oh, but uh, five's the three. Not for long. <laughs> right, deck check to a turn. Right. Now Jack to go along for those three queens <laughs> and I left the deck. 75k from Nick. Bang in there. Finds the jack. Oh. Wow. It's got 13 pigs behind. Just over a pot size bet left. Oh. Ah, there's the fun. And the gut shot on the river. I like to give him absolute stone cold nuts. I mean, this chick. This chick. Button moves. Been on the outer table there. See how Brooks, Ibn, Kanesh, Renette, Gleiton, Rudolph, Alvin. Uh, Imran Bajani, maybe his ears are getting a little bit cold there that he's wearing his hoodie, I don't think, but he's normally not the one to go into the hood for protection of any sort, so, yeah. let's check it out, let's see what he does. Right. On the next time we go, was he's going to get rid of that? <laughs> so I'm making a 50k to go with these super connectors. Hockey, 40 big blinds effective. Ops to come along. 50, best below 50. On the button. Hmm. One is like cream cheese. Like, don't use them cream all cheese, now. Eh? They just come. Well, <laughs> easy meat. Yeah, it's like cream cheese. The, the first time there's six callers in there. But you easy, cuz. But that's what I'm saying. How much do you have to bet for your oaks to fold? That's what, what I got to ask. So you don't use all your chips. Okay, well, then says I must check. Okay. Alright, so next defender there. Okay. On the big blind. Tip. Jack six six, love flopping trips. Yeah. Hockey flopping top pair. I use that much. I mean. And the flush draw for SM as well. Could get very interesting. One thirty. Makes the call. Over to Nick. Four or five in the middle. Well, let's see how much we got a bet to get them off the same. Oh, Love yeah. rips the lot. Got him. Sixty-one percent of the equity there for Lump. Put him all to the test. 
if he gets away from another it. Another spade wasn't coming yeah, up. Well, another spade wasn't so coming up. So is this, sir. Let's see your flash through. We'll see it on the stream line. Just show it. Now. Just Get show us. It. We'll see that flash through now. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> one card, one card. One, one, one. No. <laughs> five, six. No, 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 no. Five, six. Up um, shows the five. Uses all the value by shoving. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Picks up a nice yeah. putts. Especially like this late in the game. Gonna jack. You make yeah. traps, cause you think it's easy no, to no, make no, traps. No, 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 no. We got the money, check. We got what we wanted. We got what we, I got 260 out of it, check. Enough. We'll hold it up. We'll hold it up from there. Take another look at our second table, anyway. the high roller. Or you turn the flush. Mm -hmm. I'm in trouble. What do you think? Uh, Lam doesn't know this game. They <laughs> 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 think Lam doesn't know. Uh, no chance here. But I know. <laughs> one's got the jack, one's going for the flush, guaranteed. <laughs> I'd put it all in. <laughs> and you at trip six are licking your lips. Of course. You I would have called you by that. I would have. Cool G5 to Pocket fives, was yeah, it UTG? I would want Not the only. You want to all I'm stay in the game now. 50? 2.4 million. Yeah, you got so much. I'm going to fold now, folks. Best stand on 50. I learned my lesson before Tim, trying to trap, make it 260, go, go, turn the three of spades, I'm gone. 50. Right. Yeah. Next come along with his yeah. 700 diamonds. In the yeah, plus the five, Tim's also five completed. Moaz will join the party. A64. Double top pair. Action oh, is on Tim. Sorry, on. Oh, it's on me. Yeah. Who's he? Yeah? Didn't tell me. <laughs> Must check. A little bit of confusion there on who was to act. Check, check. Over to Nick with his gut shots. Check. And he checks. Two fives left in the deck for Nick. He didn't know it's him. I didn't know. Check on bet. Back at clubs. 100. 100. Well, I was in essence drawing to the second nut flush yeah. ball. I was gonna say that as well. Bottom player, second nut flush draw. Ooh. Facing a 100,000 chip bet. Pops to fold. Check him against them, make the sure they're both yeah? clubs. I followed the, the nut, eh? Show no, the eight. Them one club. Show the seven, man. Let's see, watch it. A7, you got it. And he gets that through. Comes up to his old tricks again. Huh? Up to your old tricks. I needed a bet fighting company over the top. No one. Yeah, I know you're waiting for me yet to bet. I should have come a five to make the nuts. I wanted to raise the turn, you would have called. That's 7-8. Yeah, not enough. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you're not scared of the flush? The only way you're going to bet is you're going to flush the straight draw. 7 Club. I Club. Nine. Clubs. Clubs. How are you defaulting, mate? I'm tight. A seven or eight, 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 eh? eight of Nah, that's never. That's some. Is it? Yes. Defaulting nine of clubs. I'll let them. I wanted to fucking raise them. <laughs> you left me defaulting nine of clubs. I don't know how I folded it. Three. Three flop. How much was it raised? It was 50, but there was like four or five players in yeah, and under the gun. Jump. Like we have an all in on the outer table. Ace <laughs> versus Ace Queen. Oh, Ace in the window. Mm. 
falls once, the first hand he falls. And looks like that is that for Alvin Pele. Good game, sir. We're dwindling down to that final table. Up to 50. Yeah, slowly but surely. Every time I forgot, I'll give you that Oak's name again. And it's the last time. No, don't give me his name. I don't know. Even if you're on TV, you can go and read. Yeah. And no more after this. It's him. Spreading his wings a bit here, making a 50 kg with 10 5 of hearts from the hijack. Oak comes 10 8 7. Both, a little bit of both for both players. Yeah. 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 Most players not holding a spade. One So Muzi has to navigate this very carefully as he is getting really short and so is SM so we could be playing for stacks whatever the river may be That's if we're gonna see a river Yeah, yeah. Could be contemplating jamming here Which is quite reasonable I think All in you wanna give There us you the go, list? finds the jam Ah, the reasoning behind and that, Chris. I mean, look at he unblocks. He unblocks all the spades as well. Um, I didn't think, especially if it's a hand like Ace Ten, for example, with Ace of Spades. Um, we're not going to go to that sizing on the flop. I think we're going to have a bigger. It's because we block there as well, and then we can probably get a little bit of a turn if it comes brick. So we leave it at that hand, kind of the Ace X combos. We include there. Oh. Bit of a spot here, but look at this. If he finds the Euro call here. It will be absolutely amazing. The blender. I can hear it running. Yeah, Jody, those hand dynamics, uh, it's super deep. Yeah. You could be realizing that um, the SM is, you know, like I said, spreading his wings late stage of the tournament, especially off his stack size. Realizing that it's not always going to be premium. Sometimes he's going to try and flick it in and... Uh, yeah, pots wherever you can, and and I mean, yeah. really, really great raise, yeah. Yeah, that's an ex like, absolutely amazing spot. Yeah, and now now he's up to 32 bigs, and that just completely changes the rest of the tournament for him. And it's one of those spots as well, especially if we if he thinks his opponent has one singular spade in his hand. <laughs> He can yeah. maximize that pressure completely on him for his tournament life. One card to come. Absolutely. Two very familiar names on top of that aggression frequency chart. Uh, Nick. No space. Yanu. Jeez. We've always been getting it wrong up here. Yanu. Um, and Moaz Ghali. 40% uh, on that log. Yep. Do you guys yeah, know what the calculation is there? How do they, how they calculate aggression frequency? Because v, VPIP we all know. Um, and they generally go hand in hand too. Oh, yeah. you but uh, you? I'd like to From find out maybe one of the uh, viewers out there know how an aggression percentage or frequency is yeah, calculated. I would assume <laughs> it has to do with the amount of times the person bets 
into a pot after the flop? Yeah, you are case. correct. So the formula to calculate a player's aggression C is bets plus raises divided by bets plus raises plus calls plus folds times 100 to get a percent. So it's pretty much just your awesome. bets and raises. So it's, it's, so it's, it's just there. a ratio. It's a ratio of your aggression aggressive moves, which is a bet or a raise, uh, divided by raise the sum of five. all your moves, which are bet, raise, call or fold. So I interrupted Jamie. SM has just ripped a lot. Well. Okay. Tim, Tim picks up sixes. Ooh. Yeah, and at this point, SM is really short, and you should probably be calling off with sixes. Thirteen big blind shove. He's gonna be shoving his small middling hands, raising his better ones. So I think he could find the call. Yeah, it's one of those though. It's a spot where. Do we, we have to ISO here? We're not just flatting off yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. we get squeezed on. We've still got players like Mawaz behind us. Anything's possible. Yeah, it's kind of tough with Mawaz on your left. Never gets away from it. Over to Mawaz. Tell me you're tight like me. How do you get that through? Hmm? I am um, becoming a Discord buff up uh, here whilst we're doing this, figuring out stuff that uh, certainly helps us. The view up here, Nick, can I blow your mind? We are on uh, Poker Facts, so you might as well give me something that can blow my mind. Look here. He says, he says now, but I. Yeah, I'll see it on the stream now. Uh, what am I looking at? What's the time now? Eh? We you can secretly me. play Pope Never on Discord that. while we commentate. Well, we are certainly not going to do that because then our <laughs> viewers are not going to get the best view that they can of this. I know, and, uh, I'm just uh, trying to show you something cool. Alright, question <laughs> for the two of you. <laughs> Let's hear it. Or fiction. But we have to like... Bzz. Nope. One of you could answer, I would like both of you to answer actually. Okay, fine. Some players wear dirty clothes while playing poker to bring them luck. Fact or fiction? Yes. Fact. Why? People uh, are weird and they have weird superstition sometimes. Okay. That's true. Well done. Yeah. Uh, poker is considered an official sport. That I'm sure. Jamie McCarthy? Yes. Yeah. Hey, to me, it is. Sixteen. Yeah. Hey, all the king nine of clubs and high crazy. Yes. Any input there? Sixty thousand. Uh, we'll get to you now. I'm just busy watching this hand. If I had made it sixty. Yeah, Chris is actually doing his job. You have no nine in your hand, right, son? Oh my God. You have an ace in your hand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm gonna get that one through. All right, so the question was, is poker a sport? Fact or fiction? Yep. All right, yeah, so I'm gonna have to say false because there's no possible way he can ever play any sports. That's exactly right. <laughs> Look, my opinion is, yeah, it is fact because it is competitive. It is, you know, there's a lot happening, you know. You, you are endurance. playing. Yeah, absolutely. There's mental endurance. Maybe I'll double up. So, yep. Yeah. Famous poker player Johnny Chan, winner of 10 World Series of Poker bracelets, carried a kiwi fruit around during games. Fact or fiction? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say uh, fiction because it wasn't in rounders. Ooh, interesting. I like that. Can we? Can somebody please do a fact check on that, Jamie? If you can do a fact check on that, please. Yeah. That would be phenomenal, uh, actually. Chris, that was such a good answer. Um, so good. Yeah, I just found so a continuity good. error in a 20 year old movie. <laughs> yes, boy, get there. So good. I swear to God. Did John yeah. Chan carry around a kiwi fruit during games? I haven't got one walk. 
Right, well, also Oki small blind. Thirty one pigs, seven seventy five. Got uh, the Dolly Parton, as we like to call it, in reference to nine to five. Yeah, I, I swear, if you call, I was re-raising. Oh, yeah, well, oh wait, I've got this. I've got this. Jamie's looking at the same yeah, no, site that I'm on. So I've got this. Now do you still want? Okay, so <laughs> the dirty clothes one is fact. I'm happy. Thanks, <coughs> There are superstitions just, uh, among player, poker players. Great answer, Jamie. Answer two yeah. is fact. Poker was deemed a mind sport by the International Mind Sports Association in 2010. So poker players can officially call themselves athletes. Yeah. <laughs> the Johnny Chan one. Fiction. But it's not far from fact because when smoking inside casinos was still allowed, Johnny Chan found all the d dense f uh, fog during games unpleasant, so he carried an orange, not a kiwi around, with him to take it to the citrus scent and mask to smell of tobacco. Hmm. Fact of fish fiction. Andre Karpov bet his wife in a poker game. Yeah. Right. Jamie? Yeah, it's got to have happened somewhere in the world. Fact, Russian player Andre Karpov did in fact use his wife as a stake during a losing poker game. After the losing, his outraged wife divorced him and left him for the winner. They eventually got married. Oh my god, that is so the biggest needle of the ball, huh? Wow. <laughs> right. Well, we got back to back to the hand here while Nick tries to get all that in. Uh, Mawaz opens up to 50k plus two. Lum has called. Bayard has also come along. 200k in the middle. Ace 8 4. Pocket 3 still in the lead, yeah. was putting out 60k we get set through yeah so was being the pre-flop aggressor again. definitely gonna wrap on that ace high board seven, and he's gonna get a little round that, to him so green three, green nice four. hand Especially if they're not You can only play Texas Hold'em in five, Texas. Yeah. Fact of fiction. Only one it's boring. <laughs> Jamie? Texas Hold'em. Right. Not yeah. No Limit Hold'em. Well, two chances, you know. I think every question. more chances is better. Fair point. Fiction. fiction. I mean, I meant is. fact. Oh, okay. Oopsie. Never well, mind. Fiction. <laughs> Fiction it is, poker rooms are in fact illegal in Texas, and the only place you can play in Texas are at the casino or in a local in the reserves and online. Of course, the Hold'em variant named after the state is also widely played in casinos around the world, both land-based and online. Use it, don't use it, but it certainly creates a conversational piece. But Tim's opted to flat 9-7 under the gun here. And Bawaz right behind him. King Jack gets away. Ace Queen. Under the gun. Limp a little bit alarming. Yeah, but it's also tricky. A lot of people back in the day used to flat their aces under the gun. Yeah, and exactly. Big hands as well. But as you can see, we got a 55k open here. From one oh, position for Wizzy. Fired on the button. 41 bigs. Probably to 1 million in chips. Gets away from it. Nick with King 10. And Tim beats Nick into the pot by the looks of it. Right, three to the flop. Unbelievable. Go middle paid. Go middle board. Middle board. Give us a middle board. Ace line four. Both Tim and uh, Wizzy have hit that board. Interesting to see how this is going to play out.
I think, yeah, he could go, what, like 33%? Yeah, close to 33, just over 33%, about 35. Do you think Tim's actually going to come along here, float, try and turn some equity? Very interesting. Nope. But again, just my opinion. Bono is getting it right. Yeah, I know, but it's, it's just a, you know interesting dynamic there. If you're going to be flatting under the gun with 9-7, finding middle pair, and yeah. your opponent's getting 35, 36% on the flop, you're probably in, like going to flop a lot of the time because there's so many good turn cards for you. Yeah. Fact or fiction? Curse this one's for you. <clears throat> a strong hand makes a player lean either backward or forward. Fact or fiction? Mm -hmm. Question for you before I ask that question. How old are these questions? Or these facts or fictions? <laughs> um, updated in 2023. Okay. Uh, well, strong is weak and weak is strong, as they say. So I'm going to say backwards. Well, the question is fact or fiction. Yeah, so this question was forwards or backwards? I'm not mistaken. A strong hand makes a pl player lean forwards or backwards. No, no, yes. Yeah, a I strong hand makes backwards. him lean backwards. So? Yeah. It is indeed fact. Exactly. Psychological it's studies have shown that players invariably give away what type of hand they have and usually lean either forward or backward when playing a strong hand. So keep an eye on your tells when you uncover your next beauty. That's actually handy, Chris. That's a really handy stat, you know, it's something to make you blissfully aware of it. I think it, it can make it for the younger players out there surely cognizant of it, which is uh, certainly adding to value to the stream, I think. But suited. Yeah, it's what we refer to, I mean, you know, you get these micro tells as well, something yeah. that you don't know that you're missing, <laughs> where your opponent will pick up on that you don't even know about what you uh, have going on. Yeah. You get a twitch, you're doing something with your hands, the way you play with your chips. You know, everything you do at the table gives something away. No, but 8-8 you can make two flushes. Well, no shit. You can make two flushes. And last one for the night, this one's for Jamie. The Yakuza got their name from the worst hand dealt traditionally in Japanese poker. Fact or fiction? No idea. <coughs> I think the first question should be, Jamie, do you know who the Yakuza yes. are? Uh, okay, I do, I do. Just to, just, just to clear that up. But moving on back to the hand, Nick. Well, Jamie figures that one out. Looks like he's made it 100 to go. 60, oh, he's made it 60. 60 k Yeah, yeah, but still. Man's raising with 10-4 from the button. <laughs> yeah, big mixing it up there. Talent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So unpredictable. You never see him coming. <laughs> All right, Tim looks like he's coming along. Yeah, <laughs> What he did there. Wa is going to defend with two suited cards here because he's getting a very good price. Yeah. So two pair, for two Tim, pair. Yeah. yeah, Nick uh, fighting middle. Tim leading for 165. I'm going to nick on the button. Second pair. And he gets away from it. Don't show picking up a nice little pot there. Deep in the tournament. Yeah, great flop for Tim. 
But show the already show. Show the king. The king is <laughs> Guys, if you'd like to keep up to date with our main event day 1A, that is unfortunately not on stream at the moment, head over to pokernews.com. You'll see there is actually a tab that says MJPT sorry Sunbed Poker Tour stream click there it brings you straight to us if you're not really watching and also you can go view exactly what's been happening in day 1A hand for hand complete breakdown of all the eliminations that have been and all the people that have uh, big stacks <laughs> If you show one, you must show all. Stop thinking about I'm actually going to go have a look at that right now. It's nice to play like that. Then you guys can see. I need to play a big part, boys. I've lost my stack. Yeah. I've all the tails. Could have been out and a lot. Right, so uh, <laughs> looking at it. Recent casualties of A1A is the subject line of this post. Oh, we've lost Sugi. Sig. Well, Sugi's not there anymore. Hurry language. Yeah, but a lot of triggers are probably busted. Carl Stabon. David Fine. Max gone. And of course, the legend that is Raymond Robbie. So those are busts out thus far. Yeah. Fallen soldiers of the main event day 1a fortunately only 15 percent of the players from day 1a will make it through it's not uh, over for them yet completely because they still have four more days to jump into yeah they want to try and make it through to their final day and a uh, standard chance of winning share five million rand the guaranteed price point. when did alvin go up? makes it 70k on the button king jack Unless he's sitting next over the board king eight he could get a little trickier. Yeah, Tends to mix. Yes, I did. You sure? You don't seem to do it. Yes, nice time. holding a king blocker. Decreasing the chances of your opponent having a king by 25%. See what Moaz does. Yep, Moaz puts in the three bets. I uh, like it. And Ahmed out. 201. Oh, okay. yeah. And five. Oh. Long ago. 210. Oh, okay. Before five. the dinner break. Both rather deep. 205,000. Was just over f oh, 58 bigs prior to the three bet. Tim on 50. Yeah, I think Tim's hand a little bit too good to fold. 205 con. Think about it a little at least. Yeah. And he has does have that three bet advantage. He has made the call though. Yeah, yeah. Jack, 4-5, one, one diamond. diamond, two hearts, Boaz in the small blind, action isn't on him. He opts the C-bet. 1-55. So I mean, it's top pair here for... That's pretty big. How many players you got? Yeah. BB. Uh, you naughty man. 5,000. That makes the call. Do the turn. Oh wow, Ace of Diamonds, this is where things get interesting oh, here. I want to see Moaz barrel again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a perfect, perfect card. Perfect card to barrel on, yeah. I think he will size up though, we'll probably go around 375, yeah, 420, buddy, I think. Yeah, buddy. Hmm? Sounds good. I'm a little light today. Around, oh. four, 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 please. <laughs> And I mean, Tim now even, uh, he, yeah, Tim's in a pretty tough spot. 300,000. 300,000 is the bets. Bob was and Tim gets away from it. Bob was picking up a tasty well play. <laughs> very, very well played. Absolutely fantastic turn card for him. Yeah. And uh, realizing that. Best card in the deck. Maybe not the best card in the deck, but a pretty good one. No crack that table. Maybe this one, you make that way. Button most. I would have pushed it. All right, Benny, we lost the players. Lamont, seat nine. So, seat All right, another fact here for you before poker chips, as we know them today came about poker players used to bet with gold bars and nuggets and even gold dust it soon became quite impossible to assign value to the rounds being played 
so they needed some form of poker currency. The gaming houses at the time decided to make bone, wood, ivory, and clay chips to symbolize certain values. Poker players could exchange their money and gold for chips, which, like it is done today. Is that a fact? That is fact. Interesting. Very interesting. Thank you, Nick. So, Nikki is kind of here, making it 70k to go. Queen 7 off. Pretty wide open here from the hijack. Tim, Queen 9 suited in the cutoff. Yeah. Does he find a 3 bet? Looks like he puts in a call. Nothing from Waz. Nothing from Wazi. You didn't bring me a power bank to fold that. Oh, I see Moon got mine. Over to Oki on the big blind with ace six of suit. Two fold that. Two fold that. Two fold that. Seven to two Thirty-five more for him to call to defend his big blind. Taking a little stock of his chips. Okay, so, you gonna join in on this one? Jack Queen Ace Hockey hit the top pair here. And both of his opponents were second pair. Could get quite interesting. I'm just gonna fold his queen right away. And Oki loves these big blind check raises. He's, this is the third one he's gotten through tonight, and it just works every single time. <laughs> no, but how do you have every time in the big blind you have a big hand? But it's not money, money is that ace is twice, is. kings. I mean, I've raised your big blind 30 times. You've had a big hand all 30 times. There you hear it from Nicky. I know himself exactly what our GTO is. Jamie over here is saying the man yep. is raising like a machine and getting it through every single time. I was happy with that flow. Are you ready? Are you ready for more? I'm always ready. I'm exhausted. I want to go sleep. You were asleep today. Even me. I didn't sleep all night. Okay, I want to raise it. You know, eight, nine, eight. Eventually, somebody's going to call. And then, you, <laughs> then you're going to either go to sleep or you're going to have all the chips. <laughs> was I right? I can look now. It's no. Nine. Oh, I was wrong. You have it. Eight nine. Something like hundred. Nick Yanuya raising to a hundred K Plans are ten twenty five the man and yeah. just goes bang cool. puts it out there. But you bet I bet you raised N seven oh, wow. suited for Muzi on the button. Can you show you? No. Nice. You have to show you. I told him I don't know how much I got. I told him I Oh, you told him. That's good enough. No, he had an ace, but I mean, I've raised his big blind. And action on fire in his big blind, ace eight offsuit. I've been folding the ace. And you showed. I ran into them twice. How do you get such good cards? I'm in the big blind. No, I don't get good cards. What do you mean? You just had aces twice and kings once. Yeah, but that's in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, so I really mean, well, I ran into both those aces, all in. Green. 
think she said less than me. <laughs> oh, we were both short, but he was shorter. Hello. 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 No, I don't. Where's the other one, the easy one? Mm -hmm. You're not bringing it. She has the respect I have for you, eh? Okay, you can call. I want to call her. Why you must respect her? Play. Play, brother. I'll say that. Jamie! Very first time that a poker tournament was ever televised really? was in 1973. No. CBS Sports no. actually televised no. the World <laughs> Series <laughs> poker. Wow. Today you can that find you can find tournament publicized on television as well as online. A so bit of Ipso Factor there for you, <laughs> and uh, pretty cool, you know, knowing that um, we're not the first, but we've certainly ta taken it on a level. Yeah, and Jamie Texas is actually here. Yeah, so Tim waking up with Queens um, under the gun plus one raises to 5x. Interesting choice of raise size there, we've already spoken about this on previous streams. But let's see, it looks like it's folding around. 8 4 suited for SM, he's just gonna fold. And Tim, not gonna find much value there with his queens. Wait, I didn't play this. Wait, I didn't left. Uh, you know, we find the, these uh, sort of stages of the tournament a little bit slow and tedious because, you know. Six and seven. Yeah, it's seven, not easy, seven, you know? 14. Yeah. Ah, seven, seven, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Big blind pass. Yeah, queen eight. Okay, sure. Queen eight. Okay, go there. You saw it? Spade. Spade. No. You saw it? What is it? 25. 25. With a spade. <laughs> With a queen spade. One spade. Wow. Yeah. You know now what you had. Queen 8. <laughs> yeah, queen 8. Without a spade. With a spade. Without a spade. A spade. Without no, a no, no spade. Not a single spade. No, it was a club. <laughs> <laughs> there you heard it come through the mic. Lines up to 20, 30, 30 here. Uh, for this hand, it will still be originally at 10, 25 uh, blinds. So, yep. Next time, next time. 75. Up to 75. Oh. And we have an all in. Pay. Hmm? What pay? Bundan. Twos. Huh? Fours. That small blind in those two things. One day just make a super screen. Our partner in crime here, Jamie McCarthy, just been given the nod to go home a little bit earlier tonight, so he'll be leaving us yes, around the uh, 11 o'clock mark our side. So uh, 10:30 for the viewers. No, 11 o'clock for the viewers. Sent up. Because we broadcast yeah. live, we get the pictures in our or oh, half an hour later. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. certainly, certainly not not one to take lightly. But uh, we do need the rest up here, folks. It does get a little bit hectic. It gets very busy, and uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing uh, Jamie all energized and revitalized for tomorrow. Yeah, buddy. You played every hand, man. All right, Moaz here, ace five off suit under the gun. Might be a little bit wide to raise, but let's see what he does. Okay, yeah, he's gonna fold. Nothing for Muzi. 
Ping 9 off Oki in the hijack. Not interested. Reason. There we go. Fayad gonna raise it up with Ace 8. With 10 8. Off suit. Minimum raise 60. Up to 60,000. 60. Many click. Interesting hand here as we have big blind versus cut off. 105. Tim checking it over to Fayad. Beat up aggressor. He's gonna bet and take it down. Pretty good board for him to see bet on. 20, 30, 8. Bad bomb. Lovely turning around here and watching Mark Joseph getting a well-needed back massage. The man has been hard at work all day and uh, certainly deserves it. Ladies, look after him. Look after him. King 7 suited here for Muzi under the gun. Been pretty quiet, so he was thinking about raising that one up, but he decided to let it go, stay disciplined. As action falls around to Fayyad here, waking up with a premium, beautiful hand, ace queen of spades. 75. 75,000. Every hand you. You want to see, must I start showing my cards? Yes, okay. No problem. It's not showing, otherwise we're going to ship you on a bit. Okay, 75, yes. Up oh, 30, 30 minutes. No, I'll show now. If you want to see, I'll show you. <laughs> see, what am I doing? We was with 8-6 off no. here. And you you let it go. You can always limp with that. No, I don't. I don't just want people that I want to take chips. Well. <laughs> Alright, boys, what have I missed? <laughs> I had it nice. Not much actually, you know, we're at that stage of the tournament where the final table's got five, six handed. Guys are playing a little bit tight. Everybody hoping to make it through the blinds safely here. Um, Nick Yano obviously just doing his thing. But yeah, going to the other table there, you can see seven handed. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we played down to nine, and then they will come back tomorrow, or do we play through? So I spoke to Mark earlier on. He said to us, we are playing to, uh, five levels tonight, um, but they will reassess after four levels. Um, so that'll be interesting to see. Uh, we obviously will play two full blind levels and then go on a, what I would assume would be a 15 minute break to give the players a bit of a rest up and then uh, hit another two levels after that, whereby we shall hit the ground running. Legend, Nick, thanks for that. But back to the action. Oki, 34 big blinds effective. Equivalent to 1 million in chips under the gun with Ace Knight of Clubs. We are 20, 30, 30. 80,000. And he goes for 80k. 80. 80. 80. 80. SM, pocket eights. 14 bigs. Jamie, this is going all in the middle here. Marlene. Yeah, surely. Yep, sub 15 bigs. Oi. Oh, snap. Shove from Nikiano here. I must say, you've got to give credit to the man. He just knows when to pick a spot. And uh, he never shies away from just getting it in. If he needs to isolate, yeah. that's what he does. Yeah, I don't think Oki's going to Oli, over Oli, Oli, Oli. call here with his ace nine, but he will take nope. the time to think about it. Raise Oli, Oli. Yeah. Right. Estimate risk. 
Ace versus Ace Queen. SM with a 55% advantage here. Uh, certainly not one that yeah. you can say you're comfortable with. Oh, Ace. You got an Ace? Yeah. You didn't have a Queen. <laughs> yeah, I think the dealer getting that one wrong there, unless the graphics are wrong on our side, but uh, Ace certain the, at risk here based on the chip count going into the sand. Ace in the window. Yeah. Nine to one favorite, Nick is now. Three on the turn. One eight left. <laughs> Right. Uh, cannot find it. SFGG, sir, well played. It's been a pleasure. So you should have played. Yeah. Have Ace it? Jack, 700. Ace 9. You should have played sometimes. Yes, Nick. <laughs> His total was 400. Getting to the business end, boys. Million yeah. Rand up top. And a sick trophy. Like Plus bragging rights. Felt like I had uh, one. Yeah, bragging rights is a big part of it, you know, Chris, and that's why often if it gets down to final two and a chop is made, the two will quite heavily fight over the trophy. You know, if you got into that position, Chris, and uh, the money was chopped evenly, uh, would you fight for the trophy or would you happily give it up? Well, Nick, I would, if I was in that spot, and I had to play as long as I did, there's no way I'm just giving that up just like that. If I'm going to say I won it, I'm going to win it outright. So we're the same? Same, yeah. Yeah, you see, for me, I'm different. Like, I don't <laughs> want the bragging rights. I'm just there <laughs> to have a draw. Oh, and that's that, you know? To put it Fair enough, mate. Yeah, so that's what happened. Then I fold, I mean. Yeah. That's why I didn't want to do the normal re raise Fair enough. I didn't want to get shoved on by a pair. Thanks. How's you? you? Sorry. While you're admiring my again. <laughs> Ah, what's he supposed to do? He's got eight here. Right, back to the action, Moaz, on the button. Makes it 60k. Oh, yes. Yeah, I saw it on the, on the, on the, on the radio. Hockey okay, Jack 6 on the big. Is there a radio stream? <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, I saw it on the radio. <laughs> Right. Big welcome back to Joe Jardine, who's joined us in the booth. Couldn't get enough, could you, sir? Yeah, no, thanks. Good to, have be, able to be back. <laughs> have yeah, myself no, back, yeah. No <laughs> it's all good, it's all good. Yeah, hey, you've uh, just missed SM Bust. Ace Queen versus Eights. Ah. Nick found the ace in the window. But such is the nature of the beast. Hello. Yeah, it's what it is. We got a pocket B always racing. So. That's it. You just hope to put your money in good and hold. Always. All right, let's check it out. We got Oki with Jack Six and Moaz with Jack Nine. Yeah, Moaz open pre Oki defended from the big blind. Red check bet fold. That would have been the best end against the Tell me what the action's been out there for you tonight. Ah, fantastic. Oh, Enjoying it as always. Uh, I played my uh, satellite that I won in the main event. Got a little bit unlucky, went all in free uh, for quite a decent sized part of pocket nines. Got caught by pocket eights and eight on the flop, unfortunately. Ah, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's pocket. <laughs> but I'll be back tomorrow. Had a good day. Final table of the Little Slam earlier today and uh, yesterday final table of the uh, Mystery Bounty. So carrying some momentum going into the main event. Yeah, and again, you know, adding, all adding, chipping away at that uh, Sunbet poker tour to uh, Sun City, the race to Sun City for the 2 million guaranteed. I mean, yeah. I mean, your, your, your idea was the whole time coming to this series was to get as many log points for that Sunbet Poker Tour, uh, the 2 million rand free roll at uh, Sun City. So how's it been going for you? Are you happy with where you're at? Yeah, look, I mean, I, I, 
always keep working on the game, keep working on the points. I think uh, at the end of the day, that's a it's a long term goal, right? Uh, we want to play each event to the best of our ability, and we want to make sure that we are uh, doing what we can as each individual event goes by. So. I charge my play on each individual event and hopefully the points keep adding up and we end up at the end of the day in the top five and getting closer to, uh, you know, the two million free roll. Now, Jared, talk to me about your coaching background. You know, have you had any coaching done or has it purely been based on experience, watching a couple of YouTube channels, etc., etc.? Well, quite a mix for me. Uh, I do a lot of research myself. I do a lot of learning online. I read the books. I've done all the learning on some GTO. And at the same time, I do have a coach. Uh, he's a great guy, very knowledgeable on the game. He teaches me a lot, uh, you know, helps me with my game, always there to support and back me. So I've got a bit of a mix when it comes to, you know, the, the background when it comes to learning and coaching in the game. That's amazing. And um, for any young players out there wanting to get into the game, how would you, what, what would you recommend for them to go, how, how would they go about getting into it, you know? What's the best method that you found helped you progress the furthest in the, the game to where you are today, which is currently fourth in the sun, but poker to a log? I think the first thing is playing, right? Um, there's nothing that beats experience like actually being in the game. So playing a lot, you know, playing the stakes that you can afford. Starting on the lower levels just so that you can learn the game. Um, playing with money that is, we are also gambling at the end of the day, so you've got to be responsible. So making sure that we're playing in games that we can afford, playing in games that we uh, enjoy. And then going back and looking at your sessions, you know, whether it's cash games, whether it's tournament. Uh, looking at the session, thinking about it and thinking about the hands that you played, going back and reviewing where you could have made better moves, where you made mistakes. And ideally, you know, I, I chat to my good friend Amit Karim quite often and uh, he often says he makes the least mistakes, which is something that yeah. is key and critical in your poker game is just making sure that you don't make mistakes because that's at the end of the day what can cost you a tournament. Now, I may ask you a question, sir. We were talking about coaches. And there are so many coaches out there, right? How do you know the coach that you have is the right one for you? Because everybody's got their own different styles. How does one going around determining which coach they should go for? Pretty interesting. I did get approached by a couple of potential coaches. Um, a lot of guys kind of had seen my progress and said, you know, came to me and said, look, we're, we're loving your game, we're loving where you're at, and uh, we we think that you could be someone that could uh, I could work with and that you could, uh, you know, improve your game with. And essentially, I think it's also someone that you pick with, right? It's got to be an individual who you feel comfortable with, someone who you can take good feedback from, and someone who is always backing you and is always making you feel like you know, you could be the next best player. So uh, for me, I think personal relationship is one, and then reputation of the coach and who he is and what he's achieved in the game is also an important part. 100%. Are we allowed to ask the question who the coach is? You don't have to uh, say, don't I feel obliged. <laughs> I prefer to keep that one confidential, uh, but I'll tell you he's well known in the poker community and he's Good. one of the best out there. Well, that's important, you know, as long as for you, he's the right coach. And I think that's such sound advice. You know, you've got to be able to work with a person like that because you've got to be able to trust them. You've got to be able to confide in them. You've also got to be able to chat through certain spots and have that relationship, you know. Can you imagine, you, you wouldn't be sitting up here if you never a relationship with Chris and I. I mean, what would be the point? You wouldn't want to come sit up here and talk to us for an, a half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, whatever you want to do up here if you didn't trust the conversation to be had. And um, just jumping over to the YouTube lines on conversations, Lyle Rigney saying keep Jared on the commentary box. <laughs> Thanks, Lyle. You know Lyle? I do know Lau, he's a friend, he's someone I've known for many, many years. Uh, nice to see you watching, bro. And this is why we love doing this. We love pulling the players out of the crowd, raw and live here, up with us. And uh, every now and then we get a screenshot where it goes to us here in the commentary box. And we're very fortunate to have it set up this year, you know. It's the first of its kind in South Africa, whereby we commentate live on the pictures that the viewers are seeing ha half an hour after it's happened. But we're the first ones to see the cards with the viewers. 
and uh, it makes it pretty special because you have moments like this. Just pull Jared out of the crowd. Jared enjoying himself here this evening and uh, certainly was like, well, listen, you know, it's pretty relaxing up here. It's a cool vibe. Let's get involved. Let's have a chat and let's just talk some poker. And the other great thing about this dynamic right here is we get to hear everyone's different opinion and thought process around it. It just shows how like crazy this game is and how the thought process of everyone is different. You go about it. Yes, you, you said you have a coach, but you are your own person. You have your own thought processes. They apply fundamentals over which you adapt to in-game. 100%. I think that, uh, yeah, look, there's, there's a lot that goes on in the coaching background. Uh, but before we go on with that, I think we've got an interesting hand brewing here. we got Faye that's picked up uh, Ace Jack off suit, and he's raised to 80k. We've got Nick, who's 3 bet him, with 235. What are your thoughts of that sizing? You want to come? Reflecting sizing, right? It's pretty much three times three x what phase initial raise was, so fairly standard on uh, on a three bet there. Um, I'm just trying to see. It looks like phase in position on the button, so I think you might see a call here from him. One million. How did that go? Yeah, I mean, look at. I mean, he's blocking aces and jacks as well, so you can start uh, taking those kind of combos mm -hmm. out of next range from the three bet size. Um, do you think that he could actually four bet jam here? Of 32 bigs behind? 100%. If he picks up any read of Nick thinking he's making a move, uh, I definitely think he could fall back jam. Uh, nice. Let's have a look. Let's see what. Oh, yeah, like he's saying, get about oh, if he shops. Same as you. Uh, I see him and Nick turning with pretty much a similar size stack. Yeah, it's a uh, one big blind deficit between currently off before Nick, well, after Nick's made that raise. So Nick will have some change if he opts to put it in. But again, different dynamic. We are playing short-handed as well. 100% ace jack, well, ace jack off as well. Very strong short-handed. And Nick asking him why no shove. Obviously thinking he's trying to trap him with a stronger hand than he's, uh, you know. Right, that's 503 in the middle. Three bad pot. Three to come. Eight five deuce. Me. Wow. Nikki flops top here and shoves. What's the lot to get away here? Yeah. From four fold three. Eight hundred thousand. So your thoughts on four betting in Fayad spot? Would you be four betting your ace jack, your suited ace jack variety, or the off suited side of things? And if so. Why? Which one? Which one? And uh, why? Well, yeah, it's, it, it's an interesting spot. I think that uh, with Ace Jack suited, obviously you feel a little bit more comfortable just because you've got the nut plus draw on whichever spot that is. Um, and then, would I forbid jam there? I think so. If I pick up any sign of weakness in Nick, I'm definitely forbid jamming there. Uh, it is short-handed, is a spot that you can get out of the jam. Um, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, they decide to flat call and then the flop doesn't come down in his favor. Yeah, Nick actually showed him uh, the 9-8 of so, uh, art. <laughs> interesting dynamic. Very interesting dynamic, and I think what makes it cool when, it, okay. when you <laughs> have a look at the dynamic is, you're basically <laughs> saying, you said you you're showing the cards, you. and you're showing that, okay, cool. Um, I'm playing with something a little oh, bit like different, <laughs> unorthodox. I'm, I'm three betting you exactly. with 9 8 suited. Well, uh, but the next time he three bets, best believe, he's not going to have 9 8 suited. And now you've got to use that in future, um, particularly when you're playing I mean, against the same player or at the same time. One thing I have to is. give Nick, um, he is very, very good at balancing himself completely. <laughs> You have absolutely no idea. He could be doing that with premium, or he could be doing absolutely nothing. 100%. Uh, we call him Tricky Nicky, right? <laughs> He's got uh, quite a bit of tricks up his sleeve. Um, I think early early stage of tournaments, he's calling ranges pretty much anything. <laughs> he's calling, he's raising his three betting ranges really anything. Um, at this stage, yeah, I think he plays a little bit tighter. And uh, I think that you can see some move from him every now and then, like you just saw there. So we look get back to the Ashia Oki on the hijack. 26 bigs. But I can't believe he actually has hands there every time. Sure, we'll see a raise here. Yes, we do. There we go. 
85,000. Uh, in this position. Yeah, it's a way of the I'm like, fuck this, I'm tired of this. <laughs> Sorry. I'm serious here. Yeah. 85,000. Double pocket ten. fives, <laughs> 24 bigs. Mm. Thank you to, you know, a raising hand, but not good one. <laughs> there it goes more eyes. So I thought, okay, my Yeah, nice. dumb flat calling. Was with the ace nine, good squeeze, yeah. Yeah, yeah he definitely, he definitely can mix. You can either like three bet or like just flat. Either way. Um, interesting though, because Tim does have 22 big blinds behind. The other dynamic is there it is, a three bet to 305. Yeah, now, Tim's in a bit of a spot good. here because he's approaching that, you know, sub 20 big blinds. Oh, no, sorry, yeah, sub 20 BB spot. Does he pop it in here? Just. Or does he find another, look to find another day? Mm, interesting spot for Tom out of position, right? So it's either that he's going to jam, there's obviously no way he can call. Um, Oki's, of course, going to fold. Um, well, I suspect Tom Oki will fold there. And I think you might see the fold from Tim as well. The thing is, if, if Tim does opt to, to rip the lot, well, why isn't getting a bad prize? Yeah, well, look, with this 3-bet, he's got a call, yes. in essence, uh, based on Tom's stack. So he, he's forced to call. And then it's a flop, as we can see. Um, but he wouldn't know that. So I think that, uh, yeah, difficult spot for, for Tom. I think Tom's going to fold this one. Yeah, so the second time Tim has been split that, put in that spot, Baba Wise, he folded sixes the last time. And um, I do think he's going to be get, to, uh, get to even soon. He's going to make a stand. He's going to say enough's enough. Yeah, look, I mean, he, he's got to make a stand. He's got to find a spot. Uh, he is getting short. And obviously, as you are short-handed, so the blinds come around a lot quicker. And, you know, when the blinds come around a lot quicker, you start you feeling the bad. pressure a lot more. So you, I like to take it let's see what Tim um, does. Maybe he picks up something premium where he gets a good spot. And maybe he takes off the flop. Sometimes. But before the flop, you don't have mistakes. I've noticed. Yeah, Oki okay, also approaching the closer to the 20 big blind spot here, so he could also be making a move. Sorry, you were saying? No, just checking. We've got five, so we've got five table, uh, five players, sorry, on the feature table. And we've got five on the out table as well. Yeah, the only way that's what they can do. Can only call a flop. No, last time I checked was six. Six on the outer table. But that end was well played. But bearing in mind, this is half an hour behind. So we've seen it live as it is here, and whereas with us, we will we can only commentate on what we see behind us here. So yeah, gotcha. So we're not going to give anything away. No spoilers here. <laughs> Stay tuned for next week's episode. <laughs> So speaking of reading um, and studying and so on and so forth, what is your favorite book that you've read thus far in regards to this game? Uh, probably going to have to go for the Book of Bluffs there. Okay. Really into that one. Yeah. And Nick, yourself? I don't read books. I'm dyslexic, so. Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, 35. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what do you want from me? You know, you, know, you want an on honest answer, honest commentator, honest presenter. That's what you got. Right here, baby, in the Sunbit Poker Tour at Town Square. Yeah. So I read a book by Michael Ace Vito. Uh, it's called Modern Day Poker Theory, How to Play an Optimal GTO Strategy. Absolutely insightful. Good. Massive. It's like thousand odd pages. So in depth. There's charts. There's they talk about subjects like zero sum game and um, how to go about. You know, getting <laughs> optimal play and you know, against opponents in <laughs> certain ranges. So yeah, I and mean, there's, there's there's two versions of that book. There's a cash game and there's a tournament side of things. See that I do know because that I studied in varsity. I studied game theory at varsity. So when you talk about zero sum situations, I love that shit. Love, love, love it. Oh no, does he have a screen? Yeah, it's an interesting concept. I mean, Nick, for the viewers at home, would you mind just breaking down what? In summary, zero sum game is at its purpose. Oh, okay. Jesus, I can't re remember now. I mean, you asked me to put him on the spot. I mean, we're talking about 12 years ago and a couple of brandies away. I mean, jeepers, you know. 
I didn't know you were that old, Nikki. You look so young, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. <laughs> no, Chris, you uh, look old. Uh, yeah, there no, you go. Know. I was about to say. <laughs> but uh, but preserved on that one, but I knew it was coming. So the yeah. sub game in a nutshell is you basically it's making a correct move or making a move which your opponent then counters, and if you go over that over a period of sample size of whatever it may be, you will always get to zero because they will always make the exact correct move both ways. Sixty. Little summary. I'm definitely going to look that one up, and that'll be the next book on the list. Man. Thank you, Chris. No worries, mate. Get back to the action here. We got more hours raising to sixty k. Oki, 21 big blinds. Oki decides to make the call on the big blind with King 4 off suit. Oki finally ball and pair, yeah? Check, check. Why is getting some equity, yeah? Yeah, there we go. It's the diamonds on the turn. 14 out. I think Mars is definitely going to bet this. And I think we'll see a fall Same from Oki here. Unfortunately, with his stack size, even if he thinks his fours are ahead, uh, makes it a little bit difficult to call. Good luck, Mars. Thank you. And he does go in and fold there. Laughing with the best time. Was turn card there like a search engine when looking for a rental you property? Once, uh, you have to kind of filter it out there, you know, at the end of the day. He just turned all the outs, didn't know what to do with this, ever. and uh, loaded it up and he went, right, so how do we get the filters in here? And he filtered it out by putting in a 75k bet, which Oki promptly threw in the muck. Certainly was not prepared to filter through yeah. those lists. That's Please for sure. Okay, sir. Uh, Jared, yeah. stop it. You're not allowed to laugh so much in here. <laughs> no, you're absolutely, absolutely allowed to laugh as much as you want to. Uh, it's all good and fun. All right, Nikki picking up a jack of clubs. Seven. Seven. Sure, we'll see a race coming here. 70,000. So a couple of questions coming through here from your friend Lyle, certainly testing your poker knowledge. Jared, he's asking, with the amount of players left, what strategy do you employ? Ooh. Pretty interesting. So, I mean, we said we got 11 players left. Uh, tell me how many places we, we're paying today. So we're paying top eight and we've got 11 players left as it stands. Oh, interesting, right? This question is really, really interesting, and I'll tell you why it's interesting. Uh, so, yeah. coming from a, a poker player uh, who's been in different I situations, like I see him is always something that plays a role in your current situation as an individual. So, what's interesting is when you look at guys around the table and guys who are not playing for the money, but guys who are playing to actually win the tournament, those type of guys are going to be targeting guys who are playing for the money, right? So you'll find that the guys who are playing for the money play a lot tighter at this stage of the tournament because they want to just get into the money. They really want to be able to say that they made the final table, they made the money, and quite simply that they made a bit of a profit on the, in this case, quite a large investment. Um, so in terms of strategy at this stage of the tournament, it depends on how you think about it, right? So for me, I'm thinking about it from the perspective of nobody really wants to go out at this stage, if I've got a stack, that also will determine the strategy, whether I have a stack or not. And the guys that have stacks will definitely put max pressure on the guys who don't. So there's a little bit of, uh, I think your question is a little bit loaded, Lal, in the sense that, uh, you know, you've got to think about the stack depth. That's going to be important. Um, so Lyle, Lyle did think about this and he went on to say, maybe pick a player's stack like FaZe or what is the safest way to put yourself in a position to take it down. So I'm going to pose it and tidy that up a little bit and say, right, take Nicky uh, Yano's uh, stack, <laughs> always a tongue twister, who's currently sitting on 53 big blinds. 
or take the likes of Okifari here. So let's start with the 53 big blinds. All right, so let's start with the 53 bigs. I'm going to be putting max pressure on, right? So with that, I'm going to have a raising range that's a little bit wider. I'm definitely going to be trying to put pressure on the guys to fold and force them to basically either three bet or jam. Um, because at least if I use the min click strategy as well, I know that I can get away easily as opposed to, you know, being overcommitted by raising a little bit too much or too high. So I think if I use Nick stack, definitely I'm going to be applying max pressure to the other guys. So if I right. may ask you a question in regards to Nick stack here, right? So you're widening your ranges. And if you look at the range chart, it's a big square. It's got hands going like this, hands going at the top and pairs down the middle. Look at your suited aces, whatever it may be, on this side, all your off suits at the top. If we have to go through each position, and where would we kind of move up, you know, in regards to the chart itself? And how far down should we say? So let's take the button. How far down on that exact chart will be going? So will it be deuces plus? Are we getting rid of your nine fives, the nine fours? Are we still including mixing those into our opening ranges, considering? No, we're definitely including them, and I'll tell you why, because we short-handed as well, right? So at this stage of the tournament, as well as playing five-handed, um, you know, it's going to take a lot for someone to actually pick up a premium hand that they can jam with. And so, you know, when you're in a case like uh, we were talking about Oki as the opposite kind of example, right? Uh, he's a shorter stack. And so you want stack protection. And ideally what he's thinking is, I really don't want to. Let's just jump to the action quickly. Sorry, but yeah, it looks like yeah, So just to pick up here, Fayad has uh, been aggressive, the aggressor throughout this pot. He uh, three bet pre, he uh, raised the flop and now he is bet to turn. Um, certainly looking forward to seeing what Nick's decision making is here. And he lands up calling. I mean, Nick obviously just has a read here. Yeah, it's interesting bet sizing as well. Eh? He's going, like, he can't fault. Fayard, I mean, if Fayard rips it in here, he can't fault. He's called him all the way. 60. I mean, Nick cannot fold you into a 1.3 million pot for 60k. I mean, this doesn't make sense here. Come on, Nick. <laughs> exactly. It's such an odd spot. It's, it's, it's weird, uh, like the sizing. I mean, I think if Fayard rips it here because of Nick's attitude, he might get it through. But Fayard just showing him the disappointment of the fact that he had King, Queen, absolute spaceships. And Nick, you know, picking up a flipping pot with 8-7 off the man is just electric. He's ripping through. He's ripping through this field big time. I would have called. What a ledge. Wow. No thoughts on that? Yeah. Do we go 60? Do we shove oh, turn? Do you yeah, think if we shove turn, Nick folds? Uh, once the ace lands, he's got a shove turn. I think uh, that's probably the only way to push Nick off the pot. Right? Yeah, yeah, it was a very um, interesting bet size. He went basically one like one fourth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, the bet on the rubber. I mean, he, he, he's either got to shove it, uh, you, you know, to get him off the pot. Otherwise, the 60 is not worth a bet. You could rather check it down and then save yeah, the 60 for line, the yeah. next end. I'm yeah, talking of small bets on rivers, we also refer to them as blocker bets. For those who are not familiar with the term, would you mind just elaborating on that for us? Well, I mean, blocker bets are basically when you are not 100% sure of your hand that you have a winning hand or that you, um, you know, you don't want to put in a bet sizing where you get re-raised. And particularly if you put in, let's say, something the likes of a third of pot or half pot, and then you get re-raised, uh, you know, very difficult for you to actually call. So we use the block bet in, in a sense to uh, uh, dissuade someone, in essence, from uh, going bigger. And if somebody does repop us on that, then we know that, okay, we were unsure for a reason and we should basically, uh, yeah, it's a good spot to fall. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, All right. So, in a situation like that. I, wanna I really want to kick Chris out to get Moaz up here. <laughs> no, He's welcome to jump in if you want for a couple of minutes. No, no, no. no. Moaz has eight minutes left on the high roller. No, no, no. no absolutely not. Moaz, you go relax and go and enjoy yourself, man. So, Oki's just ripped 465,000. You can come up here. So, Moaz, I'm all open to the jack then. Oki's ripped. Pocket jacks all in 460. 
25, 200 motor core from his stack of 925. I think we'll see him fall there. Yeah. One more step on this guy, Bobo. 100%. Pretty much off of his stack. But Joe, thank you so much for clearing all of that up for us with regards to those questions. I know that could be a bit hectic, yeah, especially after a long day of play, but you know, we are, I'm trying to educate all the new players as well who have joined the stream and uh, who better to educate them than yourself, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate being here and being able to help. Oki takes that one down with the pocket jacks. Well, that's and like a... we were talking about earlier, you know, pocket jacks, uh, basically in picking up a premium man in the right spot after Someone's raised it up and he shoves all in, hoping to get a call there from either a lower pair or even if he's racing at this point, you know, he's happy to be racing and take the flip to double up. Um, so pocket jacks, pretty premium, good spot, nice pick up there from Oki. So we have a look at the outer table of the high roller, still some favorable names out there, or fantastic players in their own rights. Um, and yeah, but I've never seen yeah, him, never better before in my life. Have you played football. much with him? I didn't. That's Sorry, who is that? The who gentleman in the Ferrari shirt? No one. Never. No well, one. I, I was actually no looking one. at him and thinking he's someone <laughs> I'm not familiar I'm to me. Make you believe yeah, we'll try and get some more I'm info from him. Maybe he could uh, come pop in here and tell us a little bit about himself, <laughs> where he's from, what he does, and uh, what brought him to the game. But back to the action here. Yeah. Uh, 65k, yeah, really open UTG of 28. Again, Oki with threes. 20 big blinds on the hijack. Nah, he's gonna toss that in the muck, and he does. Uh, three is just not a good hand to get involved with at this stage of the tournament. If anything, if you're gonna get involved with pairs, uh, you gotta, I think, you'll be shoving with anything from eights up. I don't think you'll see Hockey doing anything less than that. Not for me. So I'm picking up Queens. And ships it for 605k, equivalent to 18 big blinds. Tim has been having a bit of a rough time navigating this table, folding fives, folding sixes. And the other was actually has been giving him quite a rough time with him being to his left as well. So, Six or five. fortunate table draw, but it is what it is, huh? 100 percent. Got good players like Moaz next to you. You gotta earn your chips. <laughs> the Which ace jack under some again? pressure. Yeah. Second time in a row. Bit of a tougher fold this time with Ace Jack. Of course, with the Jack 10 was a lot easier, but this time with Ace Jack suited. Uh, again, ah, he makes the call. Yeah, leaving himself 10 yeah. bigs behind. Yeah, go to the action and see what happens. Three out. Ah, sorry. Nick gets out the way. Two out to show you the Ace. It's okay. Tumblr in mind. Still looks sweaty. It's always a sweat. So. Tum looks to be in quite a good spot here. Good luck, gentlemen. 1.3 million in the middle. Three to come. King 5-5, five five, no help for Ace Jack. Turn brings some equity. Any Ace, any Jack, any Spade. Finds the five, Queen's <laughs> boats up. Tim finds the double. The Lovely. The always feel good when the best handles up, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> it's never easier, it's always sweats. sweats. Oh, <laughs> Proper sweats. Uh, yeah. He didn't like that turn card at all. <laughs> so, Chens, I just need to tell you what's happening here next to me. Uh, <laughs> Riddle for has ordered a Springbok book that has arrived, or has given it as a birthday gift that's arrived here next to us. It's 38 kilos in weight. It comes with its own special white gloves to open this book. I mean, this is something to behold. Me as a rugby fanatic, I'm sitting here going like, ooh. <laughs> it's Champions Edition. Everything's in order. So the bank is from your more... Uh, so it's the captain, ed captain's gone. edition yeah, of Opus. And uh, it is just, one. wow. A crypto one. I mean, <laughs> Caitlin here, looking at it with gloves, shaking a little bit there, Kate. It's pretty daunting opening a book like that. So anyway, getting back to the poker action here. This is what we love about this place. It is special. We love everything that happens. And Moaz, Moaz. This is for you from the live chat on YouTube. Lauren Pierre coming in. 
Moaz Ghani for the win. You can see it here, I'm not making it up. You, I'm going to reply for you. Moaz says Amen. Moaz. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what happened, I'll be honest though, like I was doing well, then I went downhill and they fucking just stopped it. Greg Pinlay coming through here, Greg obviously been a long time friend in the poker community saying, when you talk about zero sum games, I love that shit, cool, why don't you explain that to the people at home, stop bullying Nick Dean, <laughs> uh, Greg, just certainly not bullying me there but it is a stretch of my thought process well, well, to go that far back in time well, well. nick so one of the more well, exciting well. players on this feature table the man is ripping through That's the field the lovely for you to come and join us here in the commentary box we'd love for you to come and join us one day up here and come sit in the hot seat <laughs> awesome good luck out there yeah. The Two things, hi Lauren, hope you're well. Secondly, I'm not bullying Nick at all. It's more the other way around. And um, thirdly, my sophomore was just reminiscing. He was just telling me now that his first trip, his poker trip that he went on outside of Cape Town was with me to an event out in Sun City many years ago. And uh, funny enough, he, he knocked me out super deep in it too. <laughs> so yeah, I've known him for many, many years. Um, actually, as you said, I. When he first started playing poker, that's when he met me. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, many moves ago. Good memories for him and <laughs> not so much for you. <laughs> oh, well, okay, you know what? Memories, good or bad, still memories, huh? 100. It's great to reminisce about stuff like that as well, huh? Uh, absolutely. 100%. But yeah, Tim Fighter, that double. 100. Sick. Good spot for Tom. Over to Oki. Yeah. You always have something in the big line. You should check every time. Something. Oh, fuck. Looks like we have it all in there. Yeah. yeah we are at risk. No, Oki's old, man. Everything's a flip to this guy. Just because you flip cards doesn't mean it's a flip. Right? It's, like it's, it's percentages. The, yeah, yeah. This sure, one's not sure. a flip. So. That's okay, it's not a flip. That's it's a one legged flip. <laughs> yeah, just now you said you six is versus ace four. Just What's red cards. Yeah. No, that one's not yeah, a flip either. Yeah, one yeah, exactly. Which one is that? Queen Club, 10 only. Queen 10 and a half, yeah. Yeah, if I had the Queen 10 and a half. Severely dominated here. Top spot. Card switch. Ace kick four, two diamonds. Two diamonds on the turn. No diamonds. Eh? Five of diamonds. No diamonds. Yeah. And that would be <laughs> GG for you. It's been a pleasure, no, sir. Does. Well done. Sure, unlucky. Sure, yeah, very unlucky. But thank you for the entertainment. It was an absolute okay. pleasure watching you. You have to bring one here now. Thank you. I know. It's, I, I wasn't like. Oh my, I'm saying it's the like new player we shot actually for five. getting good cards in big blind. Yes, yeah. yeah. big blind, yeah, so I'm saying we not wait for him to normal, come into right? the big blind unless we carry on. Because yeah, otherwise, just and even that, that was a good card. Yeah. 400. I can look for it. I, I, I have to okay, I'm just asking, but does he, do we not wait because he is the big blind? All right, having a look at the outer table there. If, if you miss the blind, we have to put close to the big blind side. No, but just wait for a second and then let them finish the hand. No, we, we can't wait okay. for, for any second. Okay. So, so what's happened? You see now we're wasting... We're, we're no, no, I'm only so asking. I'm only asking. Three, no? Yeah, he's going to have to come in here, yeah. yeah. Oh, so we're five-handed by the looks of it on the feature yeah. table. Can I please have... Yep, a, that's correct. All in the middle, yeah. That is as it stands live as well. A little bit of a spoiler alert there. Sorry. So... So we are definitely on the final table bubble so that we can confirm and uh, certainly looking forward to see what our final line will look like going in to the later yeah, stages of this tournament. Jared, good catch oh, there, buddy. <laughs> Alright, let's check up the max and we got Tim with Queen 7 of clubs. You thinking again? You think a lot these days. <laughs> Uncle Nick asked you know, if you're thinking Where's again. Thousand? He's thinking, <laughs> thinking of raising it up, which he does. <laughs> 80k UTG with a computer hand. 
thoughts on uh, opening with that holding? Mm, uh, look, like, like you spoke about earlier, five-handed, uh, you know, could beat them just also starting to open up a little bit more after his double up. Um, yeah. I have played with them quite often. Yeah, you're saying. Um, and them does have a fairly wide range, so I think Queen Seven is definitely in his range. You can carry But short-handed, Queen Seven suited. Interesting. Uh, let's check it out. Oki makes the call from the small blind. Personally, I'd like to to mix here with Jack Nine, um, considering we are short-handed. But again, on the other side, our effective stack is, is not the biggest. So my three bet is not going to be too big, but I'm going to make it enough to put enough pressure on Tim. Because uh, again, in my personal opinion, because right, we're rallying super close to the money, chip EV currently is more important than ICM because behind the money, there's no pressure. So the more chips you have, you know, the better chance you stay out of there. 100% agreed. And uh, I mean, look, Jack Nye. <laughs> Interesting call, Jack, I know, especially out the small blind. You know, small blind obviously has its advantages and disadvantages, right? You get to act first, um, but at the same time, that's the disadvantage you get to act first. <laughs> uh, Tim finding top here there with his queen seven. Um, let's see, maybe Uncle Nick doesn't believe him after a bit on the flop. I'm pretty sure he's going to come up once a bit. So these yeah. kind of flops, if you look at it, they favor more of the small blind and the big blind than the button in a sense because if you look at it we have to take it down here with the right let's let's simplify this matter right let's go uh button versus big blind in essence and we have to take the range chart so i might explain to someone take the range chart and you chop it in half buttons always got the top end and the big blinds always got the bottom end if you have to look at that so when it comes to those kind of textures, the four, five, sixes, seven, eight, nines, two, three, fives, anything connected to from nine downwards are favoring the big blind. And you'll probably find that the big blind would want to be referred to as a donk lead. Well, we'll put, in that, put that bet in there. And you'll get the big blind to fold majority of the time. And the opposite does work for the, the butt. Would you say that's a correct way to look at it? If we go BVB or BV or small blind versus big blind or butt versus dealer, Sorry, dealer versus small blind. Move on, it's like, yeah, sure. Uh, I, yeah, I'd agree with you. I think that uh, quite simply you're going to find the big blinds range is going to be at the bottom of the chart all the time, right? Or majority of the time. And especially if they're calling. Okay. If they're calling and if they're flat calling, uh, if they're at the top of the range, they're either flat calling to try and trap, or if they're at the top of the range, then ideally what they're going to be doing is three betting, right? Um, so in a case like that, that where, you know, you got a flat call with a jack now, you got a flat call with a 5-2. Um, now, Nick, it's middle pair yeah. there. Yeah. Ideally, if I was in his position, I'd man. like to lead out to see where I stand. Um, because even though Tim hits the, the 7, if Tim C bets with ace-king, ace-queen, anything premium, uh, you know, you don't know where you stand. Whereas with a middle pair and actually hitting that board, which is, as you're saying, at the range of a big blind or small blind, I would prefer leading so that I can get some information on whether, you know, I'm ahead behind uh, in the game or not, quite simply. And that, another thing, like you said earlier, when we spoke about balance, um, if we had to look at breaking down the range chart in half, giving half to the uh, to the button, half to either the, no, let's call it the big blind on the side, just call it all the time from a button open on your big blind, you're not going to get anyone. You're going to always be, that there is a, a exploit right there, because if that texture does doesn't hit you, it's always going to hit your other opponent. So with that being said, mixing three bets in from the big blind as a response to the open from the button could also work in your favor. Hence, where we're balancing ourselves now, where we're, betting, where we're three betting our strong hands and our weak hands. <laughs> so yeah, it's just an interesting dynamic. Yeah, we 100%. Let's jump back to the action quick. We got ace two five board. Ah, bet and a... Oh, there. Ten Jack, King Nick, how we looking on the YouTube side of things? Anything new? King Ten? King something. King Seven suited. No, can't be King Ten. Can't be that one. I don't think you heard me there. This is busy locked in doing something else. Sorry, I'm back with you guys. Here we are. <laughs> no <Sorry>. worries. <laughs> Dealing with so many things here. 
WhatsApps coming through from mates. Uh, yeah, just loving, loving, loving life at the moment. Production at the back of house telling me shots coming up in half an hour's time that I need to remember about. But this is what it's about. This is live broadcast. It's raw. It's rough. It's good. All right, let's jump back to the action here we go. Garrett, it's been an absolute pleasure having you in the box here. Yeah, trust me, we're not kicking you out just yet. This is not your exit. <laughs> or, uh, what, what, you get an intro and an outro, I guess it is. So this is sitting out your outro, but it's been lovely. Just getting, again, a player's perspective that's deeply involved in the community that's sitting fourth on the overall log to the race to Sun City on that free, uh, two million round free roll. I mean, it's pretty special, and this is why we do what we do. This is what it's about. I mean, you yourself, just do me a favor, take two seconds, turn around, and have a look at this room. Okay, you're seeing three different types of competitions going on here satellites, main event, uh, day one A, and your high roller in the middle. I mean, you should have seen what it was like for us earlier on when this room was buzzing. Little slam in the background, four or five tables still going on the high roller. All of these tables full with one A. I mean, this is special. Like, it, it beats being back in the in the dog box at the back, uh, watching and, and commenting live on the cards and then broadcasting half an hour later. Um, you know, a very tough job for Gary and Mark to do, but they did it so well for five years, and we're just grateful to have this opportunity to do this live and to have guys like yourself come in here you can have a good time you know have a couple of drinks is absolutely not a problem at all but we want to give the viewers the best experience and the realest experience but my favorite word for the week has been raw <laughs> it's absolutely raw rugged rough we are to we do nothing and chris's face giving all the emotions away that we love up here well done, Chris. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. WWE Shattered. style. <laughs> yeah, That's a, baby. Oh, don't you get me started, buddy. Oh, do not shit. get me started. This like, hasn't stopped talking about missing wrestling all week. I mean, this man is a fanatic about the wrestling there. You two can have a little conversation. Just expose me to the entire country, please. Why don't you? Well, I mean, um. who the hell watches wrestling nowadays, man? Come on. <laughs> Man, we've got a break now. Uh, yeah, lovely. That silence in this box means both of you watch wrestling. <laughs> no, no, no. The storylines that are captivating and oh, how they go about Marza doing it, right? <laughs> Mars has shoved here on Wismal. He's gold with Queen Jack. Mars King 3 of suit. Mars 56%. One in and a call, next. That was like a four big blind shove, if I'm not mistaken. 789 was still in front. King High. Four more outs added there. Was he six on the turn? Nine. Nine on the rubber. King three takes down. GG search. Absolute pleasure. We're probably pulling one of the sickest moves that I've seen on the final table so far. Feature table so far. I guess SM ripping bottom pair. Absolutely unblocking all the flushes and getting him to fall top pair or with a third spade on the turn. That was such a six spot. Cool. GG, sir. Well played. Nice. Yeah, not, not a very long flight back to Tanzania, but I know they are here to play the main event as well, so it's going to be exciting to see him in the field. Uh, I get good insights and information from our Tanzanian friends, the likes of Costa and Peter, saying he's one of the stars to watch on this trip, and we certainly saw that here on the feature table with the man pulling a couple of decent moves in the right times. And they're just getting unlucky that the Queen Jack didn't hit anything. You know, the King 3, not super strong, but Mar is also understanding his range is there, short-handed, that he kind of needs to find those spots, get them in, get the players out, chop the field down, so they're going to get closer to the money at the end of the day. Yeah, it was pretty much a, like an auto-call, considering it was a four big blind sharp, Mar is the big. I mean, in that case, any two will do, huh? So we five-handed again. We got Uncle Rudy on the feature table now. Rudy and Nick should be fine. Definitely. Okay, 10 to 7 of clubs. Under the guard, 23 big blinds. It's going to be uh, the action from day 1A of the main event. 75. They can generate graphics. They're not Oh, we got an open uh, year from Nick. This, uh, King nine offsuit. Raised it up to 75k. Crazy. 
Was here picking up a queen north suit on the button. Nick going with a continuation bit of 85k and was floating one. Got another 10 on the turn. Kuniki slows down here. Might see a check behind by Moaz here. Yep. Being on the river for Nick, bets out 125k, more bet, quarter part, basically just looking for the call from Oazio who may think he's good with his ace queen, ace high. King. Makes the ace high call. call and pays you Nick off. No. Oh. <laughs> Nick, you also got a king. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I also got a king. <laughs> Was making the angry, right call angry. all the way down to the rubber where he gets unlucky. <laughs> and those are spots that you always feel so <laughs> unlucky in because, you know, looking at the flop, looking at the board, you're thinking, okay, I'm possibly going to float one, see what he does on the turn. After he checks on the turn, most of the time, I'd say 80% of the time, you know that you're good. Um, and quite simply, you know that you're ahead with your ace queen. Uh, and then, Rubber brings the king in and he, Mars gets unlucky there and basically loses the pot just down to the rubber card. It would have been very interesting to see if Mawaz had the ace of diamonds in his hand when that third diamond peeled off a neck let out for that sizing. What he would opt to do holding that nut blocker. Mm. Me. Sorry. But I'm sure we'll get into that spot sometime in this final table. 100%. Definitely. Another A6 of hearts here. A6 suited. Nick can open up with that as well. He most certainly can. <laughs> Definitely at the top of the man's range as soon as he sees an ace in his hand. Top of the on the hijack with a three bet, 275. But was on the cutoff. Been again. Yeah, we'd have no idea what Tim has. Dad, if you don't mind, break it down for us. What could Tim be three betting with <sighs> in the hijack? How would we kind of construct this range if we were the wise? Oh, interesting. And I tell you why, because it's Nick that's opened up, right? So because Nick opens and Tim three bets, uh, you know, Tim knows that Nick's range is wide. Uh, well, he's going to three bet with something. He's either got a I'm, pair, yeah. I think that he's going to, yeah, go for Nick. I would actually like to see Moaz just flat here because he's going to know that he's on the top of most of these Oaks ranges. And he also doesn't need to get too involved. Um, but he, he will know that he is smashing a lot of the Oaks ranges. So for me personally, I'd love to see just a flat call here because he is one of the best post flop players in this field at the moment. Um, but he's actually he's actually up to fold, yeah. Two cents. Yeah, the sense, I mean, it's valid as well. Very valid. I tell you why the ace queen flat for me is just not the, the right play. Although he's got position, um, you know, ace hits the flop. Uh, you don't know where you stand. Queen hits the flop after the three. Bet you could have kings and aces before you. Uh, there's, you know, not a lot that you can tell. I think in that position you want to still be three betting it, right? No, no, I to get see it. And, uh, or four betting rather, get more information. Um, and obviously, if you're gonna get someone that five bets or jams there, then you know your ace queen is no good. And I think the flat, although he's a good post flop player, is a very difficult position to put yourself in depending on what comes on the flop. All right, you heard it there from Jared Jardine. None other than the top four on the list. That's what he's going for. for pushing yeah, for top three, certainly. We appreciate yeah, exactly. you coming yeah, to the box yeah, yeah. here. You are more than welcome to stay and come back after the break, but we do need to take a 15-minute break. So to the viewers out there, go grab your coffees, go grab your tea, He's whatever puts you to bed at night, and uh, be back in 15 minutes' time where we'll join the broadcast shortly. Cheers for now. Exactly. You would have any of Thanks for having me. He would have been. <laughs> if it came a seven, I was calling as well, you know what I'm saying? No, I thought the king was golden. I need to get something out of yeah. you, so I made it smaller. Are we moving? Give it. Are we moving? But are we moving at the end of this break? Are we switching? 
No. No, no they love us. You're still leaving us here. I told you, I get... Uh, I, Is I it get, Nick? I get viewers. Is it because I'm, of Nick? I'm an Insta... What am I? Must be Nick, I'm sure. Yeah, he's a social influencer. Never told. Never.
him and uh, <laughs> yeah, just drawn, what some of the players right. may be thinking in certain hands and in certain yeah. spots, because uh, I'm there myself no, oftentimes. Um, um, but yeah, let's, yeah, but let's have a look at the action, let's yeah. give you some commentary. Well, and, this mustn't uh, be a one-way street with us either. This <laughs> needs to be a two-way two street. I hope you pick up a little bit of edge on some of the players you're going to potentially play against yeah, for the rest fine. of the series. It is certainly not to give you the upper hand or advantage, but you know what? It's available to everybody. All of these players could go home and watch the same stream, get the same information, but certainly just chilling here. You know, you've got a nice recliner chair there. You know, there's, a, there's a drinks tray over here, um, and you're allowed to have some fun whilst you're up here. It is a late night session, and uh, we love having you here. Thanks for joining us, Jared. Really, really, really do appreciate you taking the time to do so. Enjoy, boys. Enjoying it. Let's get to the action. <clears throat> Have there been any notable shifts uh, in chips while I've been gone? Nick Noy is just cleaning up the field is at the it? moment. All right. Yeah, he's stacking up. Uh, he's definitely increased his stack by more than 20% in that point in time. It might even be more. I need to confirm that. Um, but like yeah, yeah, he's... I mean, he's got two different separate stacks that generally gives a good indication as to how strong a guy's hands are. And uh, yeah, he's loving life on this feature table, that's for sure. 100%. I think he picked up quite a big pot against Fayard earlier. You know, that was close to a million chip pot, which was pretty big. Tim's had some movement, Tim doubled up with the pocket queens. Um, so he's gone to over a million chips as well. Um, seem in an interesting part here with Muaz. We don't see the cards, but uh, Tim checked and called on the flop. Both checked the turn. Uh, and let's see what happens here on the rover. Tim leading out on the rover here. 425,000 snap call from Muaz. Tim looks like he's showing an ace. Okay. Thank you. It's Jack. Yeah. Okay. Ace Jack. And looks like Moaz has 10s there. Um, so Moaz <laughs> picking up that pot. You know, Jen's just getting to it. Uh, Jamie showed us early on a little bit of uh, stats here, but I'd like to get back to it. Nick Iano, he is sitting, you know, we sit there and we go, this man has the widest range in South Africa poker. Every aggressive and VP, VP gra graph that comes up on the, on the screen, yeah, he is on always top. on top of it. Yeah, he's always on top of it. But... You take yourself back to 2020, okay, to 2021 season. The man went first in the Super High Roller. He went immediately after that, went first in the main event, and then back to back went first in the main event again within the same year, and then went second in the Super Slam. I mean, that's nothing to laugh at, gents. That's within a year of playing poker. He came first, 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 and second in major tournaments, picking up 400k in the first tournament, 350k in the second, uh, third tournament he picked up 500k, and um, the fourth one he picked up 300k. I mean, that's huge. You know, Jared, if you had a year like that, I mean, you probably wouldn't be sitting here. You'd be certainly probably playing overseas somewhere, surely. <laughs> No, that's a solid run, solid form, and um, not to down anybody's play at any point in time. But let me tell you, when you run good, uh, you know, it helps a lot. Um, and you go through certain phases where the run good is just with you. Um, and I can, you can only imagine to win tournaments, there is a little bit of run good that's involved. Yeah, right? um, and yeah. of course, you got to be playing well. That's number one. Uh, but to get that type of result consistently, very challenging. Very challenging in a field with all these good players. Um, so, he's big ups to Uncle Nick. I did not know that, and uh, glad I've learned that up here in the box. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Nice to get some good insights. <laughs> yep. I mean, also main event first place in uh, 2019 at PE. You know, so I mean, <laughs> I look at it and I go, this man certainly has some edge over a lot of people. I yeah. mean, there's not many people that can say they've won five tournaments locally in their life. I mean, and for fairly decent caches, I mean, sure, not the million that you're going to get for first prize here at this main event in Times Square, but certainly, uh, you know, nothing to laugh at. And 
Um, the man surely has shown his skills and done very well with it. And uh, yeah, we are looking forward to seeing what he does with the rest of the field here tonight. Fantastic. Well, he picks up a pair of 10s here. Yeah. Uh, Oki is raised under the gun with King Jack off suit. I think we'll see Oki fold these over here. Yeah. Uh, I know Oki and I play with him quite a lot. Um, I don't think he'll be putting in a light. He really ever does. Most of the time he gets his money in ahead. So you may think about this, but I'm pretty sure you're going to see a fold there from him. Yeah. We'll see him 110k behind. I think he'll find a better spot. Makes the call out of position. Mm. Surprising. Yeah. There was a 3 bet to 350k. Hockey's called the 225, and he's only got 4 oh. 85 behind. And wow, That's what a trouble, flop. Yeah. I think we're going to see some Call major in. trouble here. Call. Him. Oh, my He's only in and a call, oh, of course. Snap call. H-check. Yeah. Hold on, Nick. Yeah, an interesting for him to call off half his stack. B flop out of position, like you say, with King Jack off is not really the strongest hand, you know, uh, especially when you're getting three bet and someone's yeah, three betting you it. when you're under the gun. I think the challenge there also by calling the raise the out of position is that if you must have flop, where do you stand? Nick, so, yeah. oh. you know, yeah. if he must have flop and it was a 10 eye board, what was he gonna do? Yeah, you know, uh, very, very tricky position. Mm -hmm. and, and, if he's up against eights, you nines, you tens, as he was in yeah. that case, ideally what you want to do is you want to see five cards. Not, right? Yeah, so you do think that Nick was three really betting him light there, then Some the shop was probably the better option, three flop, that? so mm. that you could see five cards. Pass the button. Well, I had the hand, right? Yeah, you did. And then yeah. 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 Pew pew! Thank you so much. Appreciate you thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. No, probably so you need to bring someone. Quick look at the outer <laughs> table. <laughs> Jesus. Give them a chance. Some action over there. It's not a computer generated CT. But Johnny building himself a stack there that he can rest his chin on just now. I really hope he doesn't fall asleep on that stack there. Uh, yeah. so, but Johnny, maybe just re sort your chips there so that you don't fall asleep on them. Uh, we don't want them getting too tall. <laughs> Definitely loves building a stack and very really good at it as well. Solid <laughs> player, Amy. So for those players and viewers out there, what you're hearing in the background is the action at the day 1A where we saw a five-way all-in. And guess what? If you want to go see the action, you can go to pokernews.com. And we've got an MJPT Sunbed Poker Tour tab that you can actually go see uh, the live update of that hand as it played out. And there on the screen, I know Wayne all the way in table view messaged me privately on WhatsApp. He said, Nick, please can we get the players that what's happening up there? And we saw, I think it was a total of 105 entries. I might be mistaken, but I think it was 105, 106 entries. And that is three minutes and 44 seconds until the late reg is done there. Obviously, our time, which is real and live, uh, that late reg is over. So that is the end of day one A's registration. They will now play down to 15% of the field, which, Jamie, correct me if I'm wrong, is about 18 players, 19 players there if it's 104 entries. 105 entries should be around 16 players if you round it up. Yeah. Okay. There we go. I was trying to be generous. You know, me, I always look at the glass half full. You always look at it half empty. This is what you are as a GTO wizard. I look You've got to be realistic. Whereas I'm positive. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's what I was looking for. Right. Over here to Jared Jardine, who's a guest speaker in our box tonight. Jared, take us to the action here. 
Too strong. Nick looks like he just lumped on the big or oh, small line rather. <laughs> Queen Jack. Last draw, straight draw. Very much. Very interesting draw turn there. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. the second got pick. it all. Double with eight two off. Ah, no. Yeah, he certainly had his Kellogg's before he got that hand because he got it all this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I love my dad jokes, boys and girls. <laughs> you just keep enjoying them and writing some comments out there. I see the crowd has gotten a little bit quiet on the list there. I'd love to hear from the likes of uh, Ahmed Karim, who is now chilling in his room. Just send us a little shout out there on the comments on the YouTube channel. It's always great to see the legends of the game getting in there. And I know the man's going to get stuck in today, 1B tomorrow, for sure. It comes picks up uh, ace nine off suit in a small blind, yeah. Two is good. Looks like he's just electing to flat ball. It's coming here. Oh no, really. Yeah, Check. just uh, Thanks, Personally, Tim. ace nine off suit this stage of the tournament. I'd like to see him raising up the, the blind yeah, there. Um, there I think he can easily lines. either just take it down immediately, oh, um, you know, by, by just calling is giving Moaz the big blind a chance to see a flop. He's also giving him a chance to raise the blind, and if he does raise, where do you stand with the ace nine, right? Yeah. Different story if you the raiser and then uh, you've got him acting behind you. Uh, if you are just lumping and then you've got the big blind raising yeah. on you, then you're kind of unsure whether you know yeah. you can beat him or not. And then you're allowing him to play literally any two cards, you know, he's playing 100% of his range. Absolutely. And you, you have no idea where you stand. Yeah, absolutely. So the last female standing in this group there, Renette. A familiar face in the poker scene here in South Africa. Certainly a fiery woman to be at the table with because she'll put you in your place if you try and step out of line. Go, Renette! Woohoo! <laughs> Uh, Listen, in a male in a male dominated sport like poker, you need somebody like that where the women just go like, hey, 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 hey. I'm here. It sounds like me being at home with my wife and my dog chasing each other around the house, but you know, we love it. That's what it's about. Late night poker. You're at the Sunbed Poker Tour. We love it, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the Fries Club at home. That competition is definitely still going on. And uh, our boy Jamie McCarthy, very upset he can't be there. The boys fighting for the top of the log spot that he's holding currently. He might lose that lead. Not anymore. Yeah, I lost it last week in my absence. So but it is what it is. Greg, if you're listening to listening to this, buddy, I am coming for you <laughs> next yeah. week. <laughs> Oh, uh, we got we got Clayton who's joined us on the feature table now. Right. Always makes like for an exciting coming. time with Clayton. Ah, hundred percent. Knows the game very well. Extremely knowledgeable player. Nice guy. Ah, uh, good friend of mine too. Good yeah, difficult to find something to hate about Clayton, hey? <laughs> 100%. Pocket 9 I mean, picks man's... up in his first hand on the big blind. I think we'll see him raise it up, yeah? Wow. Decided to check. Was with 8-5 off suit. Could be an interesting flop. Give us an 8 high flop. Like Action. Oh, yeah. Action, yeah. What did you do there, Wait. Dila? Oh. Is that the next one card? Check. So we've got ace jack eight on the flop. Both players check. Yeah, that's very confusing. That's very confusing. Check. 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 You know, then gives Clyton an uh, up and down straight draw there. Check. No, no, no. no. Didn't check. Mars checks again. Forty. Forty. Clayton's sitting at 2.7 million here, yeah. 67 big blinds. I mean, that's a, a massive stack. Absolutely. Wait. Oh, check. Wait. Queen comes on the river and he makes it straight. Moazi at the bottom pair will probably just check and Clayton fire with a small bit, which we're likely to see him fall to. 
Yep. Interesting the way they hand played out because uh, I suppose Lightning's thoughts uh, in position was that his nines are obviously best pre flop. Um, he'd like to see a low board come and quite simply see Moaz bet into him, um, which would have been ideal uh, blind on blind. Uh, but unfortunately, the flop didn't really bring much fireworks. <laughs> Yeah, I think the players complaining there a little bit about what potentially could have been a little bit of a misdeal, but um, all was well that ended well, and uh, certainly no mishaps on that side. We do have some of the best dealers in South Africa dealing these two final tables, so we certainly see the action continuing. No arguments, as the players have full respect for dealers around that table. That's it. Well, Jared. picking up an 8-7 offsuit on the, on the button here, and he's raised it up to 90k. Yes. Talk to me about a little bit of superstition, maybe, or, or your thoughts on, do you have a favorite dealer, and does that make a difference? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a tricky question, and a funny one, too. <laughs> I've seen a lot of guys where a dealer just sits down at the table, and they're like, Oh my goodness, <laughs> why are you here? Yeah. <laughs> and I've heard a lot of guys say, as the dealer sits down, thank goodness I see you here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You literally have the opposite reaction to certain dealers, which is so ironic and so funny. But uh, honestly, I don't I don't have any superstitions. I believe dealers deal cards, they shuffle them, they deal them. There's nothing that the dealer can do about what they bring and what they don't bring and how well, people... We, yeah. We certainly have one in Cape Town. His name is Stachy. <laughs> 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 Stachy. <laughs> Uh, if something goes wrong, wrong it's Stucky's fault. Well, 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 yeah. <laughs> always, 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 always. Listen, always I love Stucky. I'm from Joburg and I love Stucky. He's one of my favorite dealers. One nice of the best in the business. Yeah. The man has got an incredible talent for dealing the game, but his mouth runs far too much. That man should be on a dice table rather than a poker table, that's for sure. <laughs> He's or, brilliant. Or He's selling ice creams on Clifton Beach. You know those gachis that used to walk around in the ice creams, my bro? <laughs> oh, we love you, Stachy. If you're listening to the stream, uh, you certainly bring a lot of entertainment to our lives. Uh, and he's got that one irritating saying where he calls the Jack a yak. Yak. And it absolutely yep. drives me up the wall. But, uh, you know. He is uh, certainly one of our fan favorites out there. Yeah, he's chosen. Clayton being a little bit of a diva there, complaining about the chairs. Clayton, don't worry about the chairs, just worry about the cards on the table, please. 100,000. Uh, Rudolph with Jack, eight off here in the small blind. It's the eight on the flop, middle pair. Wow. He's going to lead out. And Nick Fultz is blocking. Yeah, now I'm behind. Uh, I let you. I wanted you to hang yourself. Put a two. I there. did. I did hang myself. The two and the uh, very top pair. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's very stemmed coming through promptly on the comments there. Away, Stachy, upper. Lights going up, right? Oh, Visa. We love seeing you on the stream, buddy. Thanks for supporting us all day. Jack 8. Should have come Jack 8 too. Why do you want to punish me? Jared, we've spoken about this, I think, but I'd like to touch on it again. Are you going to navigate the main events now going forward with a couple of re entry days? Yeah, me too. Uh, I'd definitely like to go in fresh tomorrow. Um, I think that tomorrow will be a good day. It should be a nice day. you got a lot of guys that played in the high roller who would have finished today and said, nah, they're going to take a break for the rest of the day and jump in tomorrow. Um, also, if you jump in tomorrow, you got the shot at making it on Friday, considering you don't get through tomorrow's field. Um, so I think tomorrow should be quite a nice field. Uh, look, 40k starting stack, the blinds start pretty small. Uh, you're pretty deep, you're deep enough to have a good run and good go at it. And main event is a marathon, right? So we're basically looking to uh, just take it easy, make our way through day one, and once you're through today two, then we can play. A lot of the guys today 
I mean, we've got a field of 105, I think it is, that you said earlier. Yeah, yeah. Pretty decent sized anyway. field. Very good. Uh, good good to start the tournament. Um, yep. And I'm pretty sure you're going to see some similar numbers tomorrow. So was raising here under the gun with Ace, Deuce of Diamonds. Okay. And both blinds defend. Six, Deuce, six on the flop, giving Mawaz bottom pair. Win. Check. Sixty. So when he bets a board like this, what is he exactly representing with the under the gun range? Over pairs? He, he's representing a pair. Um, and he's also sure, representing two, uh, basically ace uh, king or ace queen, and if you like miss that board, over cards. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not Nothing you two. can do to call the. I mean, you he, he's in position, so quite Don't simply Luke, standard now, continuation. Bit. <laughs> if anybody's got a six, you'll see some action. Other than that, yeah. If they've got you'll, another you'll game, you might see some action. Seven, eight. Uh, okay. First six was yeah. nice. I think pretty standard. Second That's what he's gripping and takes it down. Quite simply. Yeah. Yeah, and Bees has just been the gent that he is finishing off his commentary there saying thanks to you guys and great commenting, Jared. Good luck in the main event. Thank you, thanks so much, brother. Appreciate that. Earlier I let you win at King 9 and don't forget it's Queen you let me, I let you Nice to see Rudolph Re again. Uh, back uh, I mean <laughs> geez, what a series. Beautiful series yeah. for him. He's been playing great. Uh, and yeah. as we can see close to the money again and uh, shot at another trophy this year. 85,000. Yeah, I mean, the guy's stay power is just phenomenal, but uh, he's a sickie for the game, you know, and we mean that in the greatest respect. It's not a case of the guy's got any problems towards it, etc., etc. It's just a case of he loves playing poker. I mean, the man had his 60th the other day, had a 60-player tournament, okay, with Robbie Vessels as the main supporting uh, musical act. I mean, I'm still waiting for my invitation in the post. It must be up to the SA Postal <laughs> Service that I never received my invite. But uh, Rudy, I appreciate the thought anyway. Maybe one day when it arrives in my post, then um, I'll let you know and uh, I'll just frame it, you know, what could have been yeah. a great event for me. Uh, and Max Deverson going through to Bloom and uh, taking down the event. And uh, he told me categorically he really didn't go there to win the event. And they went there to drink and have some fun. And uh, he landed up taking down the tournament. Right, over to the action here with Jared. Take it away. Oh, we got Clayton who raised uh, under the gun with Ace Jack suited. Um, Nick 3 bet him to 200,000. He flat called. Um, Nick obviously in position on the button here. And Nick deciding to lead out with Clayton with a nut. Last draw, I don't think he's going anywhere. So, typically, in the spot, uh, you know, he's got a couple of options here. He can flat call, um, he can also uh, re raise here, and I think either is a reasonable play, yeah. especially with his stack depth. Uh, but he is going up against Nick, and although we can see the King 3 off or King 3 of Diamonds here, uh, Nick is the other big stack, so you has got to be a little bit careful. What an ambitious uh, three bet there, considering Clayton is under the gun and also looks like he's chip leader on this table. Yeah, hundred percent. But I think uh, this is one of the keys, right? Playing your position. Yeah. And now, yeah. when we see the five field of front of turn, you know, he could an eight uh, pocket eights could be in his range. A yeah. set could be in his range. Definitely. Um, you know, an overpay to the board could be in his range. And now Clayton's kind of drawing only to a heart. Yeah. Um, we see there he's let out again with 600,000 bet on the turn, which makes a pot 1.7. So he's gone just just below a little, pot there. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm going to see a fold from Clayton. Out of play by Nick. Yeah. Beautiful. And I, I mean, mean he was saying he's, he's got one of the widest ranges in South Africa, like you said, yeah. Nick. But I mean, he, he uses it so skillfully. And as you can see, he just continues to chip up hand after hand. 
On that flop, I mean, and turn, he pretty much touches the entire range of that board. Like, yeah. there's no circumstance that Nick Yanu it doesn't touch that board. So Clayton's sitting there going like, oh man, I've got to get there. Obviously, to the viewers, he doesn't have the graphics that we have, knowing that he had an 81% equity to win that hand. But yet, Nick's range is so far and wide between that... Clayton going, you know what, this guy must have a piece of this board and I need to get lucky in the river and sensibly letting it go. Yes, sure, obviously hindsight for us, we can see a different scenario, but certainly under any circumstance, if you're playing on that table, you are not calling there with Ace Jack, especially for a 600k bet on that turn. The river can only be more painful than what it already was on that turn. They are really good yeah, bet size. Difficult spot. Difficult spot for Clayton as well because yeah. I mean ideally he's been three bet pre. Um, even though he's got the nut plus draw, if he hits an ace or jack on the rover, you know, does he think he's not that happy? Not? Yeah, yeah, a, a, a very difficult spot. So I think he obviously makes the right move in folding there. Um, if he may have come out with a block bet, you could have seen, you know, maybe different action, um, but he didn't, and so I think it's a good folding spot. Yeah. Good bet from Nick, good fold from Clayton. 100%. Well, I it up here from a small blind. Clayton's got 8 7 of club on the big blind. I was raising with Queen Jack. He got an ace 3 7 flop. Uh, Clayton gets a piece of that. Let's see if Miles leads it to. Oh, sorry, after the flop. He decides to go with uh, 80 into, I think, 260. We might see Clayton just make the call here, which he does. Um, Clayton just checking whether Moaz has the ace or not. Yeah, Moaz should have more aces in his range, considering he, he raised pre-flop. And now with the ace <laughs> on the turn, I don't think Clayton can put him on an ace anymore. Yeah, much yeah, less likely. Do that, but at this point. Check. Both players check the turn. Six on the rover. Interesting card because it brings the flush draw. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Mars is going to check here and Clayton is going to check and take it down. Thank you. Nice pick up from Clayton there. <laughs> Jamie, what's your thoughts on uh, what do you do on the turn when the when the ace comes on the turn? If you were Moaz. Ooh, if I was Moaz. I think at that point you kind of have to decide if you want to win that pot or if you want to just check back and kind of give up. Um, obviously, when that ace comes, you have half the combos of aces, ace x in your range now. And against a player like Clyde, and obviously he's gonna he's gonna recognize that. So I think it would be quite a difficult story to tell, and you could find yourself in quite a bit of trouble if you do go for it and Clyde doesn't believe you. So yeah, it's, it's difficult to maneuver. Spot. I think the only way to kind of rip the ace there is if Clayton had to bet on the turn and you could check raise. Um, yeah. That would probably be the best or even the rubber bet. But Clayton knowingly just checks it down, takes the hand yeah. down. I think that's one of the things about Clayton. He always knows when to bet and when to check. Uh, he's yeah. always thinking it's bad. Raise to 125. I'm raising it up here with a six of suit from Karov. We got Moaz on the button. We just flats him with pocket sixes. Lighten gets out the way with Queen nine off. Queen Jack of Diamonds definitely making the call in the big blind. Yeah. We go three ways to the flop. Ace Jack eight, dumb takes the lead. 
Ah, oh, okay, I'll better do it now. Okay. Is it beeping? Okay. Oh, okay. It's gonna go off the new one get it back on. The okay. bet here was 225 okay. or 250 rather. Moaz usually gets out the way with all the overs. Rudolf folds the Queen Jack and some takes it down. Tim again using the position with the weak ace, raising it up. Uh, definitely simple play, something yeah. that's standard, something at the stage of the tournament. <laughs> Gotta put pressure on the boys behind you there. And uh, yeah, luckily mm -hmm. it stays on the flop and uh, yeah, you can then seabed that and take it on. So I had a look into the field there. Um, you know, we were very fortunate to have two satellite training today. Both of them raising, well, the first one raising two seats and the second one raising a seat plus an 8K voucher. You know, that's pretty cool to see as our people are excited, you know, the whole week they've been struggling to make up numbers for certain tournaments. Uh, and it's nothing other than the fact that the hype was around the main tournaments that were uh, on those days. Um, but leading into the main event, you know, people are excited to try get the cheapest option in um, and after this hand jared i just want to tap into your brain a little bit about satellites but jamie take us to the action you know cool so i'm waking up here with pocket kings under the gun go tim it's fine yeah so you can do it so we've seen him raise really big earlier as well with pocket queens. I think it is pretty much a leak, to be quite frank. <laughs> quite a big raise here. Yeah. And Nick will be inclined to see any flop, with, especially with a hand like that. Top of his range, boys. Top of his range. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. Don't worry, keep going, keep going. I'm off the phone. Gotta love it. <laughs> Look, uh, uh, just an interesting perspective uh, yeah, pre-flop there. Tom possibly also raising that because he knows he's on the big blind, right? So he knows yeah. that Nick likes to see flops and he knows that yeah. uh, he might get a call from him. And get as strong as he out is, yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. That's it. So Which that's he did. One thing Guys, he, he obviously achieved absolutely. what he wanted to achieve. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I think that's important that... Um, you know, Jamie and I had a chat about this, Chris and I also had a chat about this, where, uh, you know, a lot of the time you don't get to see the hand history between players, you know, on screen, of course. Um, you don't really know about uh, what's been happening all day. You only get to see them on the feature table. Um, and remember, guys come to the feature table as a table. They come together when they've been playing together for a couple of hours. So you've seen what's been happening. You've seen the type of play that's going on. And so certain things you may look at from just the general poker perspective, uh, especially from a commentary perspective. However, a lot of it is based on what you've been experiencing in the game. Uh, and those are some of the things that you typically don't see on screen and things that you wouldn't know or understand. And in this case, there you know there's one of them we know next range is wide i know we have commented on it however tom having seen yeah. that all day says i'm gonna raise these pocket kings up real big he's still gonna call me we're gonna see a flop and then he flops tops it <laughs> so <Yeah>. beautiful <laughs> yeah Great something that uh, ray alluded to in the super high gorilla the businessman invitational um you know he said to me in his interview afterwards he said you know at this level guys are setting these hands up 20 hands before that to get that spot where Ray bluffed or semi bluffed Ahmed with the deuces and Ahmed having an ace high or ace high hand on an ace high board and landed up folding it on the river because he just thought Ray had it and you know yeah. Ray and that was for me the turning point in that competition it's what got Ray to the win um, but it also is what took momentum away from Ahmed who was at that point steamrolling in the table um, which which he traditionally does in those big tournaments because he's that skillful a player and Ray just said I just knew I needed to set this up 20 hands before and he couldn't remember the exact hand but he said he gave him that spot that he knew next time he did it he would have the absolute edge on him for that so very interesting insight and well said they're 
by Jared. I think Jared making a very good point there that the viewers need to understand it's not just about that hand that's in front of you. It's about all the hands that preceded that and will go forward. Come black. Yeah, 100%. And I think, um, you know, what's, what's really interesting is that um, the experiences shape, uh, for example, if I make a bluff, um, you know, and I use a certain sizing on the bluff and I get caught on the bluff, you know, later on I want to use the same sizing when I've got the nuts. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm gonna do that over and over, and this is one of the things that makes poker so awesome, is that you know it's not just the game, it's not just the cards, it's all in your mind and what has happened during the day, throughout the day, uh, what's happened in your previous hand history with the same person, and it's basically saying to yourself, how do I use those things that have happened in the past to my advantage in the future? So as you say, Ray taught the same thing, he's used it and he used it to good effect. And I think that that is just something that typically in poker you are going to consistently do. You're always going to be adapting. It's never ever the same. Um, and that's the game. Yeah, that's why so we love it. For me, I like to refer to it as my psychological minefield. I know where my minds are placed. And I know how to run through that. And hopefully my opponent that comes behind me just missteps one to the one and blasts the leg off or gives me a stack at the end of the day. That's where we hope to go with that, you know. And Jared, getting back to our question before we had that action, and uh, Jamie's going to keep track of this action here just in case something happens. Satellites, are you a fan or are you not a fan? Um, I am. I do, I do think that satellites are also nice value. Uh, before we go on about the satellites, I think we want to jump to the action with Nick raising up with pocket fives. We got a 4-3-2 flop there. So he's got the up and down straight draw. Moaz with jack nine doesn't really have anything. I think we'll see a snap fall from him. Four-five, or three-five. Five five. Five five. Is that one? Almost getting it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Here we go. Was gets away easily. Yeah. So so I appreciate satellites. I do think that uh, they are a nice way for you to also practice your game against a lot of the guys that you'll be playing against in the event. Right? Um, many of the guys who play in the sets. Uh, you will find the odd one who makes it through, the odd one or two that make it through that are not regular players. However, you'll find that the more regular players are the guys that actually win the seats, and then they're the same players that you're going to be playing against in the tournament. So, personally, for the lower buy-in, I like to join the satellites. I like to uh, play in them just to gain experience against guys, and then also just to practice certain spots, practice spots, practice moves practice certain moves against certain players yeah. um, because it's not as high risk as what it is in the main event or in the Mega Million or even in the high roller, right? So uh, for me, it becomes quite valuable in that sense. From a monetary perspective, I think that, uh, of course, it's lovely coming here knowing I did win a satellite into the main event, for example. So coming here knowing I don't have to pay the 15K is fantastic, right? Um, and I know that Paying a thousand or two thousand rand to buy into the set to win a chance at winning a million bucks or more in the main event is certainly worth my while and makes it fun. So well, I take a guy, an example of a guy like Conrad Pretorius, who's not a very well name, uh, known name on the league to all of us, but that has won three main event satellites and converted his other two tickets to other events, which he landed up cashing in. I think it was the mystery bounty if i remember yeah and you know just an awesome story you know and it's it's cool the guy got in uh in a, i think he invested like a two and a half count his first one another 2.8 on the second one um so suddenly getting in with a position to give himself a best shot at the entire tournament not just the main event because if you win one ticket you can convert any ticket you win there after into basically bankroll for the whole tournament so, um, and I know certainly it's the way that I went about my series in Cape Town in 2023 and that got me a certain amount of success. And more importantly, in 2022, where I landed up coming third in the Megas, my entire investment for that series was about 22 grand, oh. of which I won about 128 to 130 K worth of satellite seats, which basically bankrolled me for the entire tournament going forward. 
So certainly a good way to get into tournaments for the younger players out there. 100%. Absolutely, and I think that if you, you're learning the game, it's a nice small investment that could bring a huge return. So definitely jump into the MJPT sats, come through. We have a mega sat tomorrow night, which is 10 seats guaranteed right for the main event. Um, I think it's going to be good value. I think so you're going to find the, the place the buzzing and full tomorrow night. So if you don't have a seat for the main event yet, please pop in, come and play. Get your shot at uh, winning something big. So a bit of a dispute here on the river about which card should have come out. Um, and it was obviously an accident by the dealer. Um, they are now just having a, they're calling it flow event. And interestingly enough, Jared, I, I just want to talk about this position here. You know, because I had a, a certain player, I'm not going to mention names, come to me the other day and ask, Nick, I landed up in a bit of a tough spot out in the field. And I know you've got a lot more experience in what I do in playing tournaments. What would you have done? And it was purely about asking uh, the, the case of asking what has happened to if a player defaults at the table or the dealer defaults at the table and you feel too bad and you don't want to have a target on your back by calling that player out for making a mistake in there. And my exact answer to her was call the TD. All you do is you don't say, I'm calling the TD on that play. You say to the dealer, dealer, if you are not sure, please just call the tournament director over. And that's exactly what happened here. I mean, this is a table of experience of players. So to the viewers out there that don't necessarily know the certain etiquettes of the live game, and you're a little bit concerned about putting a target on your back for trying to call a player out for making a mistake, all you do is you ask the question well, to the dealer, to the queen, like, and if the dealer is unsure, you say, dealer, please just call the tournament director <laughs> so we can get clarity on a decision to be made. That way, you diffuse the situation. It's not about the play at the table. It becomes about the dealer, and you're not targeting the dealer, but you're just simply asking the dealer the question, if I'm wrong, please, can you correct it? Yeah, 100%. Uh, look, how to win friends and influence people is one of my favorite books, and I tell you what, how you approach any situation tells a lot about you, and uh, it also makes you a likable or unlikable character in life, right? So, at the table, I think the etiquette is pretty clear. If there's a dispute, if there's a situation you're unsure about, uh, just call the floor. Okay, I don't love to call uh, Florence. <laughs> I think this is, <laughs> this is his favorite thing to call out. Uh, but basically, call the floor. Uh, there's no need for players to get involved in the argument. It's technically between the dealer and between the floor. And they will make the decision. I often find myself in situations where players are trying to explain what happened, etc. But I think it's quite simplified if the dealer explains to the floor what the situation is, what happened, and quite simply let the floor make the call. That way, you know, as you say, it's not about having a target on your back, it's not about you are the one that called the police. It's quite something that you are unsure of the situation and you wanted some clarity on the situation. And I think that that's the point, right? Get clarity by being unsure and asking in the right way. And no one can be upset by that. Absolutely. Chris, welcome back from your break there. Uh, um, I know you were work, walking around the room. You know, us as commentators and presenters, we can't, we never really get a break. I mean, we're constantly walking around looking for new content to film, looking at the action happening out there. Um, you can just now told me that Ivan Vessels is doing pretty well in one of the sats there. Nice to see us raising three seats through two different satellites plus an 8k voucher certainly looking forward to what sort of action that adds and value add that gives into the rest of the series going forward satellites bringing in a total of 66 different seats into the main event this year i mean it pays testament to to what value add it can add for the whole series not just for the players out there but for the whole series in cape town watch this space we are looking at launching a permanent satellite room at Grand West in Cape Town. And I'm happy to say that. It's not a spoiler alert. Mark actually said it on the stream last night. We are in the process of having that application. And he reckons it will already be, uh, or at least ready to go for Sun City, which is massive, you know. 
that adds an extra 25, 30 players to the prize pool because we, we all know Cape Tonians have a little bit of a sickness for poker. We love it. We'll get it on any day of the week that we possibly can. Not saying that the rest of the country doesn't, but there is a certain element of starvation of poker in Cape Town, if we can call it that, from the last couple of years where the players feel like we've got a little bit of catching up to do in terms of the amount of hours we play poker. And uh, a lot of us want to play in a safe, secure environment like Grand West. And uh, we certainly look for that. 100% uh, but yeah. you know I couldn't agree with you more <laughs> well, um, yeah you know let's I think we're the only, only one yeah, that yeah, hasn't, yeah, yeah, hasn't yeah, got yeah, a dedicated yeah, group as of yet so once that, that uh, gets sorted yeah. it's going to be amazing so it just uh, you as you said I was walking yeah. around checking what's going on we are still going with the high roller and we still have day one A on the go and guys do yourself a favor head over to pokernews.com you'll see the SPT Times Square link right in front of you on the front page click on it look at the the updates that they have there, it's fantastic. So it's like precise. It's blowing my mind exactly. You know, we don't have the stream, we have it on stream at the moment, but that's the next best thing. What are you doing for me? Right. So um, just getting here over to the blinds. Um, small blind, uh, Rudolph just completing, and Nick Yana, Yanu. <laughs> it's a tongue twist of a surname. Um, just like a check in like there a with the pocket deuces and uh, leading the flop <laughs> with Rudolph instant folding. Jared, six, six, quick four. little chat here about this. We don't need to make a big thing about it, but my stacks by Poker News introduced this main event for the first time. We are looking at continuing the initiative going forward if we can get the technical side of it right. You know, because at the moment we've got a professional like Christian from, or Christian, no, sorry, from okay. Poker News that's here helping us and assisting us with the mechanics of it. What difference does that make to you as a player, knowing what every player in the room's chip stack is sitting on? It's used currently at the WSOP as an official app to, to keep track of it. If there's any, ever any doubt, the journalists go scurrying through the room to go check on the player's stack. If it doesn't make sense, they certainly go look at it. How does that help you navigate a room if you knew every single person's chip stack in that room? Mm, interesting question. Um, uh, let me start with a personal perspective. I'm not really too worried about uh, you know anyone else's chip stack. Uh, I'm really looking at the chip stacks on my table, firstly. Um, I'm also looking at the chip stack in terms of where I stand with regard to the average stack and you know the blind levels, how many big blinds deep am I? Um, and that's really what kind of is, is on my mind during a tournament. Um, having a view of where everyone else is at, uh, yeah, look, uh, it, you know, we play poker, this can change in an instant. Yeah, so no it doesn't really matter to me where Tim okay, is sitting okay. or where Moaz is sitting and or where so, Nick is yeah. sitting um, at a point in the tournament. I think that uh, for me, what's most important is really. my table and what are the stacks I'm up against on my table because that's the only thing that I can affect in that moment. Yeah, interesting insight there. And uh, certainly what we want to hear up here in the commentary box, we want those personal connections with the players that are currently playing out there. So yes, I agree with you. I'm the same opinion. You gotta look what's in front of you. But certainly for the viewers out there that want to keep track of their favorite players, like yourself, Jared Jardine, and uh, your mate Lyle Rigney, that's coming through you, would certainly be following you and tracking you. And um, so that is a pretty cool addition for the viewers out there. But like you heard it from Jared Jardine. It's not necessarily, it doesn't make or break anything different on the table for the players, but certainly a nice addition and will draw us to Poker News, um, where we've got our own, very own Sunbed Poker Tour, uh, tab now, which keeps a, which is going to keep live record of what's happening in the main event. Fantastic. And, and, and I mean, to your point, beautiful. I've got, obviously, my wife and kids who are my biggest supporters, my family and friends and We've got a lot of guys who, you know, you always like to update. And in this tournament, ideally, guys can only see you when you're on the feature table. Yeah. So they'll only ever really know what you are and where you're at if you're on feature. If you're not on feature, they won't know. So I think for the followers and for your supporters and people who are railing you, it is fantastic. And I, I think that they would all love to see that. And uh, personally, I would definitely keep it updated to make sure that, you know, the guys that are following are able to see where we're at and what's happening. 
Um, but yeah, as I say, different Lots perspectives from a player long. perspective and then, of love course, it. from a follow-up perspective. Absolutely love Absolutely. it. So Nick, yeah. you know, just getting back to what we spoke about when we first kicked off the stream, they're all coming full circle. Yeah, I mean, we now are putting South African poker on a global scale by going through poker news. It's it's insane to think about it, you know, and it can only go from strength to strength. And like we said earlier, we're going to see a lot of uh, international players start coming through once they see what's going on here. It's so funny watching this uh, commentary stream that we're getting through on live on YouTube. If you consider where we were Wednesday last week to Wednesday this week, I mean, what a world of difference. I mean, we were getting the world of abuse and hurt on the first night. And obviously for us, it was very frustrating as commentators. But as a team, you know, we had to try and correct this so that the viewers could get the best possible imagery but also information that they possibly could like jared says you know the only time that a person actually gets onto the yeah, featured table and gets the information live to their families yeah. friends yeah, is through the featured table giving you the cards etc etc yeah, if really you're playing in a field I mean, of 120 I players Terrible. You're yeah, only you getting you nine know, players on the feature table when every I'm hour and a like, half, two hours. Like, okay, it's not a hell of a lot of information to be receiving like over a period of time. So, yeah, but the thing is we big so shout out to Poker News for coming right? all the way to South Africa. And uh, we certainly are ecstatic to have them on board because you guys as the viewers out there get the best information possible. I know it's shut down. I know it's shut down. Looks like Rudolph took a bit of a knock. When, if I recall, he had quite a bit of a stack. Did he get into a hand? Next someone? Because I see he's only got 18 bigs now. I'm behaving. Yeah, he, he's been getting one or two spots where he's trying to get a couple of things through um, without costing him too much money. But uh, certainly no big hand that was notable where he lost a bomb of chips. It's just a case of leaking. Like he's been bleeding chips through the blinds, etc., etc. So, um, yeah. Yeah, over to the action here with Jared. Yeah, look, I think uh, just... We've got Tim here with pocket jacks. Uh, next race to 85k with 107 off suit. Sounds about right. And then we've got Tim with the three bet to 290k. Miles with the pocket, two stars in the mark. Rudy with king three off suit will throw those in the mark. And Nick folds his 10 7. <laughs> yeah, short-handed games, different world entirely. Um, you know, Nick, Nick trying to utilize that UTG spot as well as his reputation to pick up uh, the blinds, but unfortunately he just ran into Tim's jacks there. We're getting close though, we are getting close. We are... Are we still five on the other table as well? Or we are more? We're five. We've got five on the table. Five on this one and on the other one, five as well. Yeah. So yeah, um, that was one more player. So we basically the got the final, table. yeah, final table bubble, which is, fine. is basically yeah, yeah, on us fine. right yeah, now. Better, and uh, from yeah, then yeah, we come back tomorrow. Yeah. And then unfortunately so one person will be our bubble boy or go. Yeah. Eight places are getting paid. And uh, can we give you a quick update? I'll show you the regards to the Just payment. So, to, so it's a million for first. Eight yeah, is seventy-five. Yeah, Seventh is a hundred. Six one fifty. Fifth two twenty-five. Fourth three forty-eight. Third. 476 second 650 and then that million up Getting top so yeah 350k deficit between first and second and then 125 mm. oh, sorry yeah 175 between uh third and fourth so it's it's not a small amount of money no no that's a, a big price pool and uh just uh, a few months ago in cape town we pretty much had something very similar we had a million up top for first place um and myself uh, Rashid and Gian who finished in the top three okay. ended up making a deal in Cape Town which was which was quite cool in the high roller uh, but big money uh, big stakes hey, I don't know. What you say looking forward to see what unfolds say, yeah huh? So, uh, Lauren Furry no, yeah, coming through yeah. in the commentary stream. The stream is awesome, enjoying every day. And uh, the cheeky, uh, the ever cheeky Makano Kier, <laughs> who is currently playing in the main event, look at him laughing over here, has a question to ask for Jared. Jared, how are you commentating and playing in the main event? 
Oh, I love getting the stick from my fellow poker players, man. <laughs> Thanks for the question, Marco. I appreciate it. I'll see you at the tables tomorrow, boy. <laughs> the interesting spot here, Jared. Let's go. Right, we've got a flush draw. Yeah. <laughs> Nick's got a flush draw. We got two pairs for Clayton. Uh, Nick finding Clayton middle pair. Back it. Nick finding middle pair on the rubber, but he can't think his middle pair is good there. Like like targeting, lead. yeah, targeting all those king x's, those you know, single pair king x's there that you have. Can't help myself. <laughs> Dick can't saying can't he can't help himself. I think he's gonna make the call for 150 k and play like the rope. Yeah. Yeah. He does make the call. Play slightly more for the two pair. Nice size nine, for Clyde in the river. Ten, three, hot. Yeah, great sizing. <laughs> hot, hot, Just to get yeah, gold. Yeah. Oh, nine. <laughs> Beautiful. And then I this I'll play by Clyde in there. I love the fact that Nick is never shy to show his cards because okay. he often goes, you know what, boys, okay. I'm here to play. You know, I'm showing you my 10 3 of hearts. Just so you know where my range is at, you know. I'm happy to take you guys on. Sitting with one of the biggest stacks at the table, certainly happy to call that river off there, uh, just to keep Clayton in check, you know. It certainly makes for interesting. Um, I tell you, it makes for interesting play on the table, and I tell you why. You, you can never put Nick on hand, and it just is so hard to play against when you can't put a play on a hand. You can't understand the action. You can't, you know, you, it, it's very hard to know where you stand when you're playing with him. Uh, he could have pocket races and he could have five dwarf hmm? suit. It's just uh, <laughs> one yeah. of those players. What do you call the, call the <laughs> So, spoiler alert, in the next half an hour, we will be crossing over to a final table, feature table, where we will be playing down to the money bubble. Okay? So, paying top eight, we will eliminate the ninth player and then we'll come back tomorrow to complete the action. So, everybody that leaves here tonight will be in the money. All right? And we will be joined back on the action uh, by Jared here. Jared, take us through what is happening here. All right, beautiful. Moaz picks up pocket kings under the gun. Must be raising it up, which he does to 90k. Mine's are going up next time. See if he gets some action. Nick falls at 10-2 this time. Oh, come with Buck. Great, so I think we're going to see some action from them there. Oh, this is pretty interesting. Custom's got uh, 2 million in chips and he's got 50 big. This is 3 bet to 210k. Noir's in position. So, good go with the flat, yeah? Good go with... So I think that uh, flatting would definitely be the best play to try and get some value for this man. Yeah, especially being in position, like you put it. You know, Tim will kind of continue majority of flops. Queen four nine, two hearts, action on sub, pocket eights. Down bets to one hundred thousand. Tim leads with a very small bet on the uh, on the flop and I think he's just trying to get a little bit of information to see where he's at. He knows that his queen is in Mars range. Um, obviously the overpairs are there. But the flat ball was some senses disguising the strength of his hand. Wow, it's interesting card. Very, very interesting. interesting card. Picks up a flush draw there. Um, while Mars has a set of kings. Let's see if this either. I think it's going to slow the action down a little bit. I mean, that's m the most power turn card we could have asked for, I guess, especially in this scenario. 100%. So, Joe, sizing wise, yeah, uh, about half, 60%. Check. Wow, he checks oh, back. He checks. Wow, we no oh, yeah. way. We cannot script this. That's Jeez. the worst card in the world. Absolutely terrible. I card mean, surely if Moaz is checking the turn, he's checking the river here. Uh, check. Oh, he's got to check the river. I don't think that he can fire at this river. A uh, little bit difficult. Jeez, um, had he bit the turn. Um, I think Tim would have folded. I don't think he's calling with the 8-eye flash draw, particularly I because agree. he's got 
quite a few overguards, and I mean, Ace King, Ace King, all of those are in Moaz's range. Now he's got a target. 25. Three quarter pots. See, if so you, you know, Moaz is also going here, like, this pot is valuable enough for me to have some sort of equity in it to try and take it down. I don't think he believes in the back of his head that his kings are good here, but he certainly is repping a bigger ace, uh, a bigger heart, sorry, than that the Tim holds in his hand, or at least he suspects that Tim holds. And uh, Tim <laughs> reaching for chips here. here. Well, I'll tell you yeah, why. Tim... If we if we have a look at the board, you, you got an ace, you got a, a jack and a ten that's beating Tim, because obviously we've got king, queen, nine on the board. About. So, not many hands are actually beating him at this point. Uh, difficult call for 425, but Tim does have the stack. Mm. So, interesting spot. Let's see what he does. Oh. Looks like he's going to throw it in. And he is. Yes, great man. I, yes. Yes. I, yes. I, have, I have an insight on Moaz Ghani, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I, I, I feel know, confident I to call him commentating on this oak. He I is legendary. I love it. Not trying to doubt you guys here in the box, but sometimes you just got to take your little, little bit of upper edge on the guys that you know around you. And uh, Moaz. What? No, this is sick. Am I right? Yeah, any other hot to call guys, I mean, Maybe you guys can... need to hear the commentary that just happened on the table. It is unbelievable. Moaz Ghan is sitting there, turning to Tim, going to him, I'm pretty sure you had at eight with the eight of hearts. I mean, how good is this oak? Enough now. Go look in the stream in 30 minutes. I know what you ate. Which one? You. Why did I? Look at the love no heart. No, this time I had it. <laughs> 30,000. I had it this time. 2,000 on the big blind hands. What is your income? I'm not your handball. I told you, kings. Gives it to call. Kings, no heart, you said. Pocket yeah, I was right, yeah, pocket oh, eights, yeah. What kind of this? You could have easily have done that with a king. I mean, um, a jack. Mm. Oh, it's me. Sorry, guys. Uh, oh, well, it's a raise. Mm -hmm. Not a raise. Okay. Just One chip's a call, right? One chip yeah, is a call. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Well, not sorry, better. Maybe we make Option some. Option to raise. Oh, no, this 50, is confusing. 50, what were you wanted Lies to up. raise? Oh, it's up. Yes, I wanted Lies to up. raise 100. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to do at my end. Uh, I don't think so. Yes, sir. Timmy? Wow. Nick Mazi. flopping the flush. No one is really catching too much on that board. Tim's got a five. Oh, and Tim turns the drop fives. 75. Well, Nick's got the flush. So, action replay play apology here. It has been an extremely long day in this commentary box. Recap on that previous hand. The four came on the flop, okay? The turn came king of hearts, all right? The river came the four of hearts, which meant that Moaz obviously boated up on the river. Um, so <laughs> apologies to our comment, uh, well, to our fellow viewers and listeners out there. Uh, a little bit of a misclick on our side here, but listen, these things happen. Um, but the fact that Moaz Ghani, after the hand, still comments to Tim and says to him, you had eights with the ace, uh, eight of hearts, or po possibly pocket seven or seven of hearts. It's just 
It's not so sick. I mean, it's just plays straight into the man's hands. Yeah, he's uh, he's electric. But we do apologize to our viewers out there. We did miss that one a little bit. Can I have one Ben to me? Ben Maxton coming through and uh, commenting on the group there. Uh, gents was has a full house. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. We do realize what we missed there. My humblest apologies. But I'm just gonna bust button or I'm gonna bust. That's unlikely you'll be blind and you're doing it. Space. It's such a sick hand. I raised the button, right? Dang it. <laughs> he's, he's, on the, he's on the big line. It's pretty fishy though, Oaks. Come on. Nine, nine, I mean, cheapers. Five hundred. I think the graphics were wrong on the screen, guys. Don't try the production house at the back. Production team there at the back. Just fucking lost his shit. <laughs> but as a joke. Yeah, Rudolph Ree really now right. getting pretty short with 12 bigs. Yeah, 8 7 and Diamonds usually and yeah. you'd see him playing. He folds that under the gun. Nick with Queen 4 of Hearts. Definitely raising right. this one up. Base. 210. mentioning the raise. This room has always future. I'm short, eh? You showed you crooking. Both, both. Yeah, both. Look yeah. at this guy. Dealer's not checking. No, 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 no. It's fine, it's fine. Yeah. Anyway, he's playing. There we go. Okay. Oh, you're not playing. You're playing. I didn't look, I didn't look. Oh, look, look. Heavy looks. Oh, shit. There's already a hand in there, right? 2.5. Like in the big with 9.5 or falls that front. I made my first hand now. Like, no, Ahmed living the dream on this side, yes, sitting on the side of the feature table, supporting the boys, getting a massage after what has been a tough and grueling series for him so far. I know you'd appreciate being up the paddle courts, but uh, well done, Army. We love seeing you here, boy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I made my first hand I'm not. Is that what you said? And uh, pictures coming there from the outer table where Imran Bajani just and keeps on scooping pots. <laughs> Thank goodness though he dropped his chip stack to a normal level so he don't, doesn't want to rest his chin on it anymore and fall asleep on the side of the action. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to I mean, I paid you 175 or something. Yeah, you should have paid me more. In fact, I should have should have raised the turn. You would have got it all. Yeah. 52 I don't think I get it. Nah, I don't. Fall. Yeah. On the turn? Yeah. Me? Yeah, we are five on the turn. Huh? Can you just Sorry, guys. I just have to mention I see Marco and Okia standing next to us in the box here. Yeah? I need to ask him, why are you not playing in the main event, Marco? We get it slowly from It's my friend. Two hundred and twenty-five. Gosh, Marco is an entertaining character, I tell you. <laughs> well, honestly, th they should turn that like, into a cartoon for the series somehow. Yeah. Like somebody that can do it out there, please turn yeah, Marco Nokia into a cartoon yeah. character. He is a legend when it comes to the banter in the chat. Coming up here and telling us how he just got knocked out. A little bit of justice for you, eh, Jared? Guys needling you across yeah. the comments, the, the YouTube the commentary there. The yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mm. All right, Lyle coming through here again for you on the comments here. Jay, what color New York Yankees can cap will you be wearing when you take the photo with the trophy on Sunday? Adding any superstition, uh, adding any superstitions you would have when playing like habits or lucky clothing? This is coming to it. Uh, no, not really. I like I love the NY caps. I'm sure you guys have seen me in all the picks. Yep. I've got the black, I've got the grey, I've got the red, I've got the green, I got all of it. Uh, just one of those things. Love wearing the caps. It's nice, fresh, and clean. Uh, I also love nice. wearing a black t-shirt. 
That's just That's something right. that I kind of standard way at the tables. Uh, neat, simple, particular basics, man. That's me. Nothing really superstitious, nice. so I don't have a lucky hat or a lucky charm or anything like that. I do have some, some crystals that my daughter gave me to come to the poker with this time. Uh, put it in my bag and got it with me, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't work on superstitions. <laughs> awesome Have stuff you, to hear. You know, just having a look around, you know, speaking of wearing you know, black on black, I can swear a lot of the guys that are playing these events are all techno DJs, but they're not playing poker because uh, I don't know if you ever see the techno DJs, they're only black, so at least they got something else going on for them. That's it. <laughs> techno boys. You're not a techno DJ in his bed, are you? No, 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 not in his bed, so at all. <laughs> them plus one. <laughs> But you show eggs. I'm yeah. just checking out the stacks again. I've really yeah. down yeah. 10 big lines now. You used up all your good cards. You're going to see a shot from him soon. Now you have to suffer like I did. Fortunately, <laughs> I was getting that shit. Uh, the that other guys with chips on the table are yeah. really just. Uh, and they and they, they keep raising and, and uh, it's not finding a spot to get it in. Nikki, 30. Tim, 50. Yeah, star-studded like rail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of the big Puna. players on the rail there. <laughs> yeah, Punath, Alvin, SM, and uh, yeah. Ahmed Karim sitting third on the all-time list for South Africa. Nah, man, you have watched A couple of great guys, that's for sure. Teach you good. Rudolph, Oaks, Rabbit, Rabbit. Now, this is a joke. <laughs> I would have played. Is there any pictures in this deck? I would have played. No, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Oh, sorry, it doesn't matter. So, what, I have to play it open? Yeah, we. Oh, one time. Yeah, we. Explain. I'm picking up eight queen in the big blind there. Single one, right? Make folding. What am I going to do with Jack and Oaks to four? I mean, how does oh, Nick, nice. oh, Nick find a fault there? I mean, the guy never faults. Queen eight, man. <laughs> I gave you more credit. I'm lucky for Tim there. Mm. The man's it's hoping, really please, race, please, race, race, please, race, please, race. And then instead he gets a fault yeah. from one of the loosest players at the table. You didn't give me a walk, Nick. I gave walks. Yeah, this stage of the tournament is always interesting when you pick up a big hand in the big blind and it falls all the way around to you. <laughs> yeah, Sometimes no, you almost no, don't no. actually want to even no, open those cards because <laughs> you don't want to think Your about what could have been. It's actually brutal. It's so brutal that it falls around to you because most of the time Oaks are going to open with King 8. I mean, showing you there Clyton having King 8 suited. Normally that's an opening range hand. I mean, the man just letting it go like it's sweeties. Shout out to Jonathan Woolley watching back at home. Jonathan, we miss you here, buddy. It's not the same without you, but I hope you keep it well. Thanks for tuning in. Absolutely. John, oh, baby. Three, two, hundred and ten. Right, right, Nick is at it again. Why is this nice spiky end now? Okay, big cards. Nick with queen six. Nick shot him a big card. That's, 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 that's a first. That's a first. Wiles makes the call, seven, six. Yeah, yeah, king ten, four, two diamonds. Nothing there for more. I think gonna see bit and probably take this one down. Yeah, calling for big cards pre and certainly getting two big cards out on that flop. Wise is not gonna look to get too much more involved. Yeah. Like small one comes, I give up. Not even gonna try and, and, and represent anything. Any time now. What's up? What's happening? No, I mean, it looks like he's got absolute heaps there. I yeah, looks like he's down. running out the table. I see darkness there. We got yeah. Time Lump. Lump looks a little bit short. I mean, I could be wrong. Yeah, I know the, 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 the yellows. Like one tower. Yeah, the yellows are 100,000 and the blues are 25,000 apiece. So if they're in stacks of 20, with the blue side. What's that? Something now. Oh, got no. 500 there. Yeah, 500 plus uh, plus one or two 
Let's just call it 700. Good. And if that's the case, at 30, 50, 50, we should see some movement from him very soon. 100%. 100 Speaking of movements. Don't mess around, eh? Then with Ace Jack on the button. Nice hand to pick up at this stage on the button. Two at him. Yeah. Light and ask. Just getting on how much he's playing. Players often use this as an uh, opportunity to ask show, you how much show, you're playing show, just to see, um, obviously uh, get a bit of a read on your answer. Um, <laughs> and your answer not just being how many chips you have, but how you answer. Right? Correct, All of the pros, of course, uh, listen to tone, tonality is important. And, uh, yeah, counting your chips either in a, in a positive or negative way will also show a little bit of strength or weakness, which gives them a bit of a read before they even look at the cards. You even got the Queen 8 right. Even the Queen 8. Jared looks pretty comfortable up here, hey? I mean, the man is loving in the seat. I mean, listen, these aren't the worst seats, I must be brutally honest. I mean, we sit comfortably up here. I mean, Jared, if you really want it, but we could swap roles. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are dying to get in the... <laughs> get on the felt, man. <laughs> yeah, we had a little bit of our fix last week. Or in the week we uh, got involved, I think, on Tuesday night. Tuesday night we got involved, had a bit of fun, uh, played a couple of free rolls, you know, we're keeping the night off, so it was pretty good. Okay, I, I suppose if we ever get that chance again and there is something like that running, we'll probably jump in it again. Um, yeah. uh, Jamie absolutely loved it, first like big tournament experience, even though it yeah. was a free roll. Uh, we ran pretty deep in the wild and then lost about like two hands of the next. <laughs> so, yep. you know, experience yeah, best of both worlds, in essence. So that you don't yeah, you and I making top five, five there, unfortunately not cracking yeah, the note to win the ticket. Oh well. Mm. Yeah, Sh Shannon and Elizabeth knocking me out. Yeah. Yeah. Not the worst person to get knocked out by. Yeah, no, such, no, 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 such a, such a, a genuine lady. Incredible core forces that she's running here in South Africa. You know, the whole rhino rescue and animal rescue that run her and her husband together. It's just the coolest thing, you know. We need more people like that in the world where they give a shit about other things that need to happen. Yeah, if you have a chance, go check it out. Um, I'll confirm the website for you, but I'm pretty sure it's the Shannon Elizabeth Foundation online. You can just pop it into Google. I'm going to copy paste it straight onto the YouTube group as we're speaking. You guys can go check that out. I try sometimes, but I don't get those right. I struggle with those, but I do try. Amazing how there's so much uh, camaraderie and laughter happening, and there's two places away from uh, from, 70, from, from a bubble. Well, 75k, and one person's going to walk over nothing tonight. So the poker community is quite interesting because as much as these are your rivals and competitors, a lot of the guys become really good friends. Uh, you know, when we're on breaks, guys are chilling together, having conversations about the game. Uh, when we're not on breaks or when we're chilling and waiting for tournaments to start, uh, like I said, myself, Ahmed, Ray, um, we went to go and play some, some battle earlier in the week. Uh, it, myself, Jody, uh, and a couple of the other guys had dinner earlier on. So we end up uh, spending quite a bit of time with each other and uh, yeah, makes for a, a great community and great friendship over and above the poker. Big flop for Boaz, yeah? Big flop, flops the straight flush draw. There's brick brick, but Nick still, he's just ahead of your queen high. If it was better, 100 on the flop, Nick Corbin, check, check, turn. Queen high. Really? Yeah. Let's see. Just give me the money. I don't, I don't. Wow. Moa was a little bit upset to himself there. You couldn't bet I think he missed an opportunity to take the down in the river there with just a small cheeky little bet. And he would have probably got it through, but, um, you know, <laughs> what a hand to have. Jack, nine of diamonds on a king ten of diamonds flop. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 68% of his equity on the turn, and uh, Bricks are uh, one card to come. Guess from a big favorite. 
30 for to you, losing um, it to Queen Eye. Nikki. 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 Cruel game. Surprised? I'm surprised yeah, he didn't raise on that river there, knowing what the action was, because Nick normally like fires that. the turn if he I has any sort of cool. equity in that hand. Yeah, it's an interesting spot. Bomb it, just man. Spot alone. Don't bomb it, just be happy for me. I can bomb it. <laughs> How can I be happy for you? I've lost the last four ends. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll get them for you. Yeah, now, as promised, I did you. post up Shannon's uh, website there. Well, I did. Man. And now uh, it seems to be gone. I don't know why. Maybe oh. that's a security oh, a feature that. of. Uh, yeah. on fire. Oh, oh we got an order in here from uh, Grudov for 380,000. And we got a call from Tim, pocket tents. Oh, that was frustrating. It was decent and that uh, Rudolf has picked up a long time. Yeah, Rudolf at risk here. Final table bubble. Tens versus ace four. Oh, some sweat cards. Seven, five, deuce, deuce two clubs. Off. Seven of the turn, Rudolf yeah. needing any ace, any three. Unfortunately, he breaks that. Good game, Mr. Free. Been a pleasure. Standard shove there, Joan. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I think he was quite caught dead for the longest time. Ace four suited the best. He's going to find the best spot for him. Uh, unlucky to run into them, pocket tens, and uh, out goes golf nine. Yeah, I'm afraid that's all she wrote. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, we are down to our final nine of the high roller. One will walk away with nothing. One will walk away with a million. Looks like they're going to be doing a table redraw. And uh, you can hear they asked for a little bit of a break. It's been a long I'm ride. Sure they'll have a quick break. Definitely so have I'll a quick break. Definitely have a final table photo. And uh, yeah. We'll be back shortly. Because he calls it Ken. What? Yeah. yeah, I know. That's what I thought. Yeah, no, no. All right, and uh, we have burst the bubble. We are going to the final table. So, folks, stay tuned. We will be back with you in 10 minutes from now. Cheers for now. I also need to go for one. You are not alone, Nigi. Yeah, we'll, you, we'll do it. Just well, let's get rid of the formalities then. Because they're, they're going to need it to do a cheap count. So you will, you'll definitely get a break. You know what I mean? Wait, little. You had? Let me see, though. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still like that now. Yeah. How do I look? Yeah. It's because of your mic piece. Huh? Okay. Um, yeah. So Mark wants to try a new idea where he wants to put a player in that seat. No, so I don't need to be here. Not in the photo, no. Peace and tranquility, my friend. Peace and tranquility. My man. Edward. Dave. Two players, seven, this is 
So after this, you're gonna give him how much, how much time? I just wanna go run to the room. Quick. Yeah, go run. And run. have a quick smoke. No, run to the or smoke. Yeah? Okay, run. Go, you've got five minutes. Okay, sharp. How's it, guys? Okay. Run, 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 run.
swing knee. Oh. Nobody bats an island. Yeah, it's five. Oh, five. 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 Yeah. We've got Lighton. Lighton. Uh, Nick. Wait, how come he's got so many? That's uh, impossible. Lam was making here. a suggestion, which I think what? is. Hey, Tabu. Something's wrong here. That can't be someone's palms here. Sorry, but that's impossible. Who's there? I don't know, this is what happens, but anyway. This way I, I always get rid of them. This way I always get rid of them. Imran. Eight plus five. Mm. So you for people to grind it so hard. The so final table. The final table plus another five. Yes, sir. 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 No, I was saying that it's not even to do a deal, but it's to give a small price to the bubble. So that's not really a deal. That's How's it? Or you? Lam, ask more. Ask. No. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So you're not. Uh, okay. No, he he was suggesting that you give. Then we can all go home. I'm not changing the money. No, let's play. I'm changing the Try that again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Yeah, boy. Final table of the high row. About to kick uh, off. Uh, nine places or nine people left. Eight get paid. One's going home with nothing. <laughs> Two days of grind. Someone's going to be walking home with one million rand. Jared's joined me in the booth again. And uh, Nick is just uh, taking a little bit of a stroll. See what the action's like. I'm sure we'll be back yeah. a little later. Right. right, guys, you've got five extra time banks. Please give um, me your honest opinion. Use them You're allowed to be biased if you'd like. And good luck. Who what is you? your pick to scoop the, the high roller tights? The button always resets on, on Ooh, seat number nine. Tricky one. I'm having a and look at the, the table right now. Um, 50. It's an I love Doc. I love his style of play. I love Clayton. Buttons on also, seat nine. Great style. Um, just waiting for Doc. Mm, Amy. Strong player, Moaz has been playing quite nicely this series. I've played with him quite a bit this series. Uh, <sighs> let's see, who am I going to go for? I am going to go for... I'm going to go for Clayton. I like Clayton for the win. Yeah, it's a great shot, it's a great shot. Nick, welcome back. Your pick, sir. Thank you. Well, I'm picking up my popcorn off the floor at the moment. That's what I'm picking. Um, my Sydney, I think this field is, is uh, one that there's there's a couple of wild cards. Certainly, Nick Iano uh, Iano is uh, definitely in the mix. Um, but for me, the two gents, the biggest threat at this table is the last likes of Imran Bajani and Moaz Ghani. Purely based on their stack size and just not, uh, right now, I think they're going to add a formidable amount of pressure onto the rest of the field. And with them sitting right next to each other, it certainly is going to add value to that corner. It's like going through the blue corner of the flipping Monopoly board. If you land on it, you're going bust. And these oaks are certainly going to look to pick these, these oaks off as they go along. But Nick, I have to put you on the spot there. You have to pick one. Who would you pick? Uh, Imran Bajani. All right. My pick. I'm going to have to go with you, Jared. I'm going to have to go with Clayton. Now what? I'm going to have to go with Clayton. I'll be back. Let's check it out. The action started. 
Guys, feel free to drop us a comment in our chat on YouTube and let us know who you think will be scooping this high roller and taking home that million rand first prize. But I was called earlier. Yes. So, um, now I feel also superstitious. You know? Was off on the whole day. If I get stuck now, I'll blame the gloves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, she's a bomb that turned. Yeah, boo. You're never going to get that shot again. Yeah. Right, laughs coming out there from uh, right. the middle of the field the there. Currently, as I see it, we are sitting with 27 players left in the day 1A. They are either playing to the end of level 15 or down to the final 16 players, which will then go through day 2, um, on, which starts on Saturday. Uh, yeah, look at, yeah, looking at this day 1A, like you said, either down to the next level or 15 players. But uh, Chip leading day 1A currently, Jared Solomon. 350,000 chips. Jared having an unbelievable run again. Let's see how far he takes it. But guys, go over to pokernews.com, hit on the MJPT tab that you'll see on the home page. Stay up to date with all the chip counts and all the news coming from day 1A. And uh, yeah, all the other days will be published on there as well. Plus, there's a link to the live stream, which you'll be able to watch if you prefer it that way. But let's get back to the action. Interesting little bit of uh, 60. texture, this, would you say, Joe? Yeah, definitely interesting 60. texture. We got pocket fives with the up and down straight draw here. Um, Nick gonna make the call with the ace. Just like we were referring to earlier, if we had to divide those uh, those ranges in half, uh, Nick on the small blind, Emil on the big blind, similar spots where Nick. Would, you would be thinking of he'd be opening the top half and everyone will be depending on the bottom half and especially with that texture on the two three four board we'll be okay. smashing the big blind a lot more than this, the opener and the small blind 100 percent and there we see uh evan makes a straight on the rubber there and he's just gonna flat call because the board's paired or well, looks like he's just gonna flat well he's got about 1.25 x pot left let's see what he does here to know too much about Yemen. Uh, I'm sure we'll find out. He does make the call. And Nick gets the bad news. And uh, Yemen picking up a 930k pot for his efforts. Mm. <laughs> you, uh, Nick at the back there. Yeah, such interesting dynamics. Like I said, there will only be, there will be one person bubbling, unfortunately. Yeah, listen, quite a big bubble. I mean, uh, you know, when you've got 50k invested and uh, you're getting your Finally. one and a half x on your money, uh, your definitely something to consider. And like away. we said earlier, you know, uh, for some of the guys, <laughs> money now. means different things. Everybody has a different financial situation and uh, becomes quite interesting, um, you know, when you consider the players at the table. And I think that that is also always something on the players' minds, right? 100%. Whether somebody is looking to chip up and looking to make a step up on the the ladder and the leaderboard in terms of uh, icm and uh yeah it will also mean who puts pressure on who in terms of the chip stack yeah and let's not forget about Renette shimani also the seasoned vet when it comes to these big tournaments she's there she's got a lot of chips as well uh, so we can't, yeah, can't really count her out as we get yeah 2.5 million 50, 50 bigs there yeah it's, it's a, a big show Let's see if she's going to open with a pocket of threes. Has a look around the table. When she's looking around the table at this point, she's looking at how many players behind her. She's trying to think about the bed sizing. She's trying to think about basically, uh, you know, what can she put in and see whether she's going to get caught on the flop or not. Yeah. Well, was picking waking up, up pocket eight. She's definitely going to get called all three bet, yeah. Let's see what Mars decides to do. He decides to go with the flat here. Yeah. He's up the position to her. Three in the Ooh. window. What a flop. 
Really interesting spot here for Moaz because he's got a two feet to the board. Is it the set? Yeah, I think guard size or a quarter could be good. Yeah, she, she gets two big ones. Yeah. Yeah. Now Moaz might call or else uh, raise here. Yeah? He's gonna go with the flat ball. See what the turn brings. Four hearts. Okay, she falls up. Moaz should still be thinking he's good, yeah. Do you think Grinnett uh, is not sizing up now? Considering? Um, I don't know, you know, it's all depending what she puts Moaz on. She checks back. Oh, both check. <laughs> King Trick of spades. Trick. Moaz checks again. I'd like to see about 280, 300. Maybe three quarter apart. Yeah, I think that's a good size bet. I think she could get paid. Um, let's see what she goes for. 250. She goes smaller, 250. Yeah, I think she's going to get paid here for sure. Boaz makes the call. And he gets the bad news. Full Nicely done in it. Yeah. Great flop for a great turn. <laughs> and these pots are um, extremely big coming into this level, eh? The swings can uh, make you yeah, or break you. It's, all, it's going to be difficult to navigate. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I think if you take a look at Mars in that spot, he's got pocket eights, he's got an overpair to the board, and flat called three flop, flat calls the flop. Um, I think also just being a little bit tentative, you know. Don't want to get into unnecessarily oversized spot, uh, <laughs> practicing a little bit of pot control in that spot. So, uh, uh, I mean, good good position to practice in that situation. And as you can see, I think he lost the minimum because uh, I think he could have thought that his, his age was still good there. 100%. But you know, hindsight, it's a thing, you know, after him going to showdown there, thinks himself, game, huh? three bets pre wouldn't be the worst idea. Yeah. Definitely three bed pre. Could have seen on it. Uh, fold that hand at the same time in position. She might have called just to set my hand. Oh, right, we've got Doc here raising to 110k with uh, 8 6 of diamonds. Doc plus one. One ten is the open. The open on the small on the big blind with deuces. Starting to have a twenty nine bigs effective. Well, thirty in essence, inclusive of the one that's in there. King four nine rainbow. Check. You yeah, haven't gonna check. Doc probably gonna fire a C bet here. King 9-4, King definitely hits his range with his raise pre. 130. 130 to call. Here we get out of it. Yeah. Up. Thirty-fifty. 
We only a couple of hands into the final table, and uh, we've seen some movement of those chips floating about. A couple of comments coming through here. Jamie McCarthy being very cheeky. Instead of going home and sleeping and resting up, he's commenting, loving the stream, lads. Good night. And uh, Liv Morgan all the way from Ontario, Toronto, Canada, saying howdy, people. Hey, who is winning? We unfortunately can't answer that question because we don't know until the people land up in the money. So uh, stay tuned and find out. We're not getting out of the way there. Love with aces. Race. 21 bigs. 125. Titan kick jack. Might be a call or a three bit chip from Clayton. Let's see what happens. Yeah, Clayton starting the hand with 58 big blinds effective. That's definitely could go either way considering but you know obviously the three bet sizing you want to be wary you don't want to go too big it's going to just absolutely destroy your stack as well so you've got to be very precise in regards to what sizing you want to make here nick ace five 41 bigs over to Emi. gets out the way 125 to call Oh, wow, we queens 27 big blinds. I was about to say, I thought he was gonna fold for a second. Looked like he had the movement. <laughs> Definitely looking at a three bet, yeah. 325. Race to 325. Wait, right, right, so you're off to the three bet. Yep, Jack five. Way. What happened? He was going to leave the way forward. Safe. 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 Right, there seems to be a bit of a, bit of a dispute there happening. Yeah, just continue with that and talk about it afterwards. You couldn't get a penalty. Um, I didn't see what happened, but a friend did lamb uh, played out of hand. Oh, eh? Kilo, wait for the end of the hand. Okay. Kilo. 125. All right. The end of the hand. They're in the middle of the hand, man. Okay. It's me. All right. It's me. It's on you. Yeah. Okay, let them finish no, no, the hand. No, no, no. Let them finish the hand. All right, so... Love the ship for 1.1 million. So yeah, um, Lums clicked back, jabbed 1.1 million. One million and sixty. How much? One million and sixty. Call. 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 Only let a call. Oh, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> okay, they're both there hands. <laughs> Pretty sure that just stubs all up there. I had so bad. Weeds versus aces. Six for Deuce. Four on the turn. King on the river. Love finds the double. And Ibn is left with seven big blinds. That's unfortunate to run into a cooler at this time. Yeah. Just as they start the final table. Nice hand for Lum. Nice pick up there. So, just getting back to, you know, we had a discussion earlier on about uh, the calling of uh, TD over to assist the situation. Um, you know, Renetta 100% in a right there to complain about the action that Lum had um, acted out of turn. Uh, but my opinion there, just wait till the hand is done, then proceed to call the TD over and say, right, I'd just like to point out that a certain player it out of turn and then there is a one hand action okay. no problem though everything I, s I guess as a result is the same but you know for somebody like Ben, who's not as experienced as a lum or Clayton is on the table you know it puts him under massive pressure when the guy is clearly not folding pre and um it just you know changes dynamic a little bit but i guess maybe it's renette's um, strategy as well she keeps the pressure on all around the table and that's why we love seeing her uh, being out there and putting the men to the test. 
Yeah. No. Interesting, I tell you. All right, we continue. Imran. 10-3. All right. Yeah, we've been seven on the button. Still with that discipline to get away from it, even after going through that cooler. Yeah. All right, turn 1.9 million, 37 big blinds on the small blind. I'm going to flat call, yeah. Let's see. Dark has in big blind. Dark decides to check. Pass these cards just as we had. 7 6 are hearts. Ace, deuce, queen, two clubs. What kind of line does Tim take you? I decided to check, um, giving Doc the option to lead. Let's see if he does take the lead. The option and the opportunity. And, uh, 75. Looks like he's taking the opportunity. There we go. Very cool, uh, very cool uh, piece of apparel Doc's got there. He's wearing. Sick hoodie, that. Love it. Right, so it looks like there is currently 23 minutes left of the level in uh, the day 1A. So they played to level 14 or through to level 14, Nick? No, so they play through to the end of level 15 or oh, to 15, sorry. Yeah. So there's another. Okay. The two levels after this level, so they're going to be going to oh pretty my. late tonight. Thank goodness yeah. we're not going to be here to witness that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, whoever gets through securing themselves a shot into day two, and as well as a shot of that five million rand prize pool, that's up for grabs. So, yeah, who knows? Someone from day A, day one A, could be our next uh, main event winner, our next millionaire. Yeah, and fantastic for the guys who play day one A. They uh, get to take two days off, come back on Saturday. They do have the opportunity and the option to play in day one B, C, and D. Um, and you go through with your biggest stack. Um, so some of the guys might exercise that option. Uh, but at the same time, if you're going through with a big enough stack, considering the size of the field today, um, I think it's going to be one of the bigger fields. And I think that you, you will see uh, some of the guys Definitely be happy with the stack size that they go through with. All right, Eben's ripped it here for his last seven bigs, 355k. That is over to Kadesh in the small blind. Gets rid of it, and so does Renette. And uh, Eben lives to fight another day. Yeah, nice. Picks up the blinds there. Adds another 20, 25% to his stack. So. Yeah, every bit counts. I'm sure you must have been sweating a bit there. Just trying to get through a dock. So you sweating whenever you're all in. <laughs> Here's a question for you though, that spot, right? Seven bigs, false to Renette, considering big blind anti as well as 50k as for the big blind. Do you not call off any two there considering your stack size? It's like basically six small blinds. Uh no. Not calling off any two. And I think uh, even considering the stack size I think you, you, you need something connected. Yeah. You need either a suited connector, you need an ace, you need... Obviously, we know that generally the range of somebody with that uh, size stack is going to be a lot wider. We do understand that. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's not any two cards. It's got to be two cards that are connected in some way or have a chance of winning the pot. So basically, single gappers, two gappers, any, any broadways, any ace. 100%. Gotcha. All right, so next opening under the gun, plus one to 110,000. Give it falls on the hijack. Over to Tim with a cutoff. What is that? 110. 110. This is too little for me. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta love it. This is too little for you. <laughs> I'm not going fishing. I'll just put it under the tent. <laughs> See, what's wrong with you guys? It's in our little healer bit there. Eh? Well, how much is it supposed to be? 
What's the number, guys? What's the raising number? Ethics <laughs> raise is perfectly legal. <laughs> yeah. Just give the gents a bit of stick. Okay, well, what's she going on about? <laughs> Ace 10 is a bad. I'm behaving myself That's now. I only play good cards. And I show with pride my good cards. Just what like these cards, all these cards. <laughs> Gotta love you. <laughs> Add such a <laughs> dynamic to the table, eh? Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. Gotta love being I'd on the table with him. I'd love to see that extra charts of uh, his phone call charts, bro. That I got. Oh my <laughs> word. <laughs> Nick, how are we looking at the, uh, the YouTube comments there? Anything interesting coming through that uh, we can reply to? I mean, bearing in mind it is nearly 1 o'clock in the morning. I think most people have headed off to bed. We've still got 99 viewers, which is awesome to see. Those 99 viewers, just drop, yeah, drop us a little comment there. Give us a little joke to tell at this time of night, and we'll get it out there. <laughs> All right, action on Nick again. 41 bigs under the gun. Gets rid of the night and off. Nine bigs, <laughs> middle, a6. Yeah. Look at that discipline. He just said, he didn't even think twice. It works, yeah. Turn, pre jack. Behind. You'll see them open here, definitely. One, raise to 130. 30 is Tim, the that's open. not the right number. <laughs> Good, Nick says, Tim, that's not the right number. <laughs> Lights at 7 8. <laughs> Definitely think he will be defending here. Yeah. So tell everybody what they are. Tell them. Ace, nine, ace seven suited. Wrong. No, it's Ace Jack. See, I have to sit next to you to see yeah. that. <laughs> Clyde gets it. Oh, sorry, Tim gets that through. If I, said king, if I said King Jack, would you fall over your chair? <laughs> yeah, just looking across into the field of day one A. Shannon Elizabeth still there, as I mentioned earlier. Joe Solomon. Tutu's over there. Who else we got? Who else we see? Still Wolf's there. Yeah, some, some notable names. Anand Kumar. Yeah, the nuts there, Norman, Norman Cherry's over there, we got That's Jody from Break. I'm not even he's, he's joking, a nuts stack is as high yeah, as the top of his chest. Then. I mean, yes, we know the man is a short person, <laughs> but he's <laughs> got a stack that is about to yeah. support his, I've never seen uh, no, but I don't know. his face up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let him go have a little nap. Yo, Emmy picking up Ace King, UTG. Like First hand, he's actually playing on the final table. Raise 200. Ops that mid click. Up spot here. Mmm, King Queen suited. 485, 10 bigs, 9 bigs. Mm. That's, uh, that's impressive. Oh. I don't know. I, I personally, I think I might be ripping it there. At the same time, uh, with the race from under the gun, I suppose you got to respect the under the gun race with, uh, you know, 8 players to get through. Yeah, Renette coming up with Ace King herself. On the cutoff, could be interesting. Makes three three hundred thousand to go. <coughs> I don't think they could be playing that one, yeah. <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> All right, Emmy, facing a three bet out of position. 250 more for him to call. I definitely think maybe he's going to click back here for a bit. Thanks. Especially What's the that? stage of the tournament. You know. If you're putting max pressure on your opponents, especially this close to the bubble, considering there is Eben who has nine big blinds, what are the chances that uh, if you get called four bet there, that you do let go of a hand like Ace King? Uh, actually, a high chance, and I was actually just going to say now that such a tough spot for Emi because 
He's being three red by somebody in position. Right? He has a skin. Yes, it is a skin. But because they are deep, uh, both Tim and Ronet, it makes it a little bit harder to play the hand, right? Um, because yeah. he can't shove. Um, and now we got to see what happens post flop. And he's got to play the hand out of position. Yeah. So, See that, is, especially with that dynamic. Back. With that dynamic, you know, if you fall back there, mm -hmm. right, and Renet somehow opts to to just rip the lot to 57 big blinds that you had started his hand, you can still get away with it. Yeah, at the end of them, because it puts, in my mind, it puts her under immense pressure as well, especially from an ICA perspective. Ninth going home with nothing. Yeah. Eighth in the money. So sick dynamic. But uh, now we both pick up a gut shot, or they pick both up, both up a gut shot. Which I can say I had a gotcha. Uh, but <laughs> we're out there. Eight thirty in the middle. Over to Emmy. I think he might actually go quite large here. Check. If he wanted to bet. <laughs> Emmy going with the check. I think you might see the check behind, unless Renee decides she wants to take a stab at this one. Check. Let's check back. Yeah, both players being pretty cautious, and I think rightfully so, right? 100%. I mean, both utilizing pot control completely. Probably not overinflated, especially the size. But again, you know, I think now it comes down to an issue of who wants it more, especially the way play, the hand played out. I mean, it looks like he's betting 325. 325, yeah, going about 40%. Might see, might see a call, yeah, and a split pot. Yeah. I mean, I know we could take all the seven X's out of ME UTG, unless it's pocket sevens, but I don't think he's uh, coming calling that. <laughs> well, we are calling the three, but there. With pocket sevens, play other positions a bit toughy. Some, some queen X's, hey? I mean, predominantly we're looking at ace queen and pocket queens. Do you see any other yeah. combos there that you can think of? Call. Nah, look. Uh, yeah, 100%. She I makes the call. Good. Let's put the pot. Um, I, I mean, it, a little bit I difficult. Queen snow. Um, I mean, you got uh, 19 diamonds on the Guns flop. Fish, you got a jack on the turn. You don't necessarily want to let your opponent in at that point. Uh, so I think that, yeah, she makes a good call there. Um, and a good split pot. Both of them exercising some caution and. Uh, yeah, played out, I think, the way we would expect that one. 100%. So, you know, of course. Uh, I mean, applying that pressure effect. as he does. It was a flop all the turn. Nick Ianu's comment good. afterwards, oh, you guys are such you fish, you man. I mean, <laughs> the oak is <laughs> just a character, and we're going to absolutely <laughs> love having him on his feature queens. table if he's still there tomorrow. The man throws around, slang around the table, he, he throws around his weight, he throws around his chips, uh, he's a character. Uh, going over here to the comments coming through, Leonard Mitchell commenting, my wife says she's leaving me because of all day I watch poker. I think she's bluffing. <laughs> Leonard, I would not suggest you test that theory, my friend. There's an old tale of a man betting his wife in a poker game and her leaving him for the man that eventually won the hand. I would not do it. Trust me, it's not worth testing your woman to see if she's bluffing. <laughs> All right, action on Tim. Ace tenner clubs. 39 big blinds. Race. 130. 130 to call. Back out the way. Lighten, 8 to deuce. <laughs> that looks like he gets that through. Gets it through. Ace 10 never usually and you feel too comfortable with. Especially raising from middle position. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. 
was trying to get it on the top. Yeah. Yeah. So is this your team? Your team is right. yeah. Cool graphics coming up Five there for us. Uh, as you can see, Imran Bajani with 80, 80 big blinds going to this final table. Uh, with Renette promptly behind him. And uh, I guess that kind of explains the balance of play, the way they played that hand with the ace king there. Certainly with a little bit more caution, purely because of the fact that both of them are the biggest stacks at the table. Certainly no reason to get involved at this stage when you're one of the money. You know, ICM dicta dictates not a good spot to get involved with big hands, especially ace king, which has absolutely nothing pre flop. 100%. Alright, so uh, Tim plus one here, making it a 130 false to Clyde on the cutoff for pocket the sixes. Huh? I don't think I could have checked it all the way. Do you leave the turn? Do they see it? Clyde's in this calls. Oh, 130, yeah? He's trapped in there. Because you can have that. 130, right? Because it was a 10-hour board. No, on the one turn, call, Nicky. Uh, how much? Oh. How much? I'm just asking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nick and I. Thanks. Girl, Nick. Yeah, I know, you're right. Good. Right. No, if he gets out of the way. Jacks for the wise. Oh, wow. the big lines. I think we're going to see some fireworks here. <laughs> we're trying to analyze. I'm learning something from Nick. You want to beat you. It's to beat everyone. So how big do we go here? Except me. <laughs> or do we just kind of mix it up and flat? I just say I don't think I could have checked it. Yeah. No way. Just what is gone for just a flat. I have to put in a bet. All right, yeah, so he's like palacing his rage. You're complete. She could bet. She could bet. bet. But no, also, I can leave. Yeah, yeah, look, I mean, I personally don't like the flat situation. there, and I'll tell you why. Oh, oh. oh. Check. Just 500. That's okay. a big flop there. Know. Yeah. Flop yeah. <laughs> then you know. You're like you know the set. And this is why Moaz is so good at not racing ace jack free or jack free here. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta love the man. All right, so 350 the bets. Clyton with a decision. We are going to see what's going to happen shortly. You know, interesting spot to navigate. It's never easy, especially with those two spades on board. See those chips in the middle. That's why Tip could be betting his flush draws as well. Clyton's just going with a flat. I was probably going to fold, yeah. Definitely after the raising call, he's got to fold his jacks. Yeah, jacks always a tough one to play out of position. Right, uh, Tim in uh, a little bit of trouble here. He does have those backdoor spades. Three of clubs yeah. to no help. Clyde still miles ahead, having the check mark. Tim has got 1.6 million, there's 1.2 in the pot. Mm. Let's Very see. Interesting spot. Let's see what he bets on the turn because his attack to part ratio is going to be pretty interesting after this. Yeah, I was just thinking about SPR right now. When I mean, he's yeah. currently got what, what, 1. 1. 1. 1.6 around there. So, yeah. Clyton has uh, some options here. 450 the bet. Yeah, I think Clyton's just going to flat. I mean, uh, there's no reason for him to raise it here. I'm just saying. Uh, he's obviously betting on the ace, so if he were to raise here, uh, I'm pretty sure he might just lose them or he might just get into fold. So I'd rather just flat all in this position. And, uh, yeah. 100%, because you obviously see that in Clyton's mind, that three does not change anything currently, especially Tim opening up plus one. So you know we're bucketing his range as we putting we're taking all those threes out there. Unless, you know, it's pocket threes, but you don't really be at this stage I don't think he'd be clicking back or main clicking with three. So it looks like he does up for the raise. One point two million. Oh oh Clyde oh. up playing max pressure, yeah. And tough side to the tough crash. Spot. To tough, away. tough spot for Tom. Uh very tough for him to put him on ace king. Uh, purely because he flattered pre. I think that uh, generally you're going to see a three bet pre from Ace King. Um, you know, Ace Jack could be a hand that he could put Clayton on or even Ace 10. Pocket six is a little bit harder to see, of course. Um, yeah, tough spot, yeah. yeah. I think we could see the money going in. 
Or it somehow finds a fault. That's uh, that's something special. Hundred percent. You know, just working it out here. Just cold calling from a cutoff. Wet here with some of it. Going through the motions. And I mean, if Tom decides that he's going to call you, yeah, he can't. He's got to rub it, right? And the reason is he's got yeah. to have nothing else behind. Yeah, I mean, his total bets, I mean, he bet 450 on the turn, giving him 1.65 million. So, you know, if Tim does ship a client, we'll have to call another 450 off. But in essence, he will never, he will not do anything else. He'll just throw the money in. Look at Clayton, not getting anything out of him. Nah, nothing at all. Cold. Very cold calls. 750 more. 415 behind. Yeah, Clayton knows he's got him stone dead, yeah. 6, 7, 9, 10. As we can see, Clayton on the check mark already. Done throwing dead. Is, um, I'd like to think the possible of the tournament. The most absurd decision I've ever seen to, uh, a person make here is to make this a uh, cold call. I mean, 415k behind. Back of clubs on the river. Check. Tip checks. The inevitable is going to happen here. All the money is going to go in. Now, do you think Tip might use a couple of time bags? <laughs> That's sick, yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting Doesn't dynamic know. though, because Evans only got seven bigs. If he falls, he's got eight. Falling. Six. Yeah. Here we go. Ends. All the money goes in from Clayton. I'm thinking of mine to myself. So all table can hear you. Oh rubbish. Yeah, Nick in the background trying to do my eyes. Nope, does not look comfortable though. Yeah, no, he's been put under pressure from beginning to end. Look at Eben. Eben is hands in front of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to control himself on the bubble. 50, 50k, high roller. Call. Call. And he calls, drawing dead. Call. That is the bubble, oh. ladies and gentlemen. Tim, it's been an absolute pleasure. That's unfortunate the way it ended, but... Uh, Unlucky, Tim. Yeah, it's the way nice the cookie crumbles. Yeah. Well done to everybody on the table, especially Evan who managed to five, going seven bigs, making 75k mid cash for himself. Who knows? He could scoop the whole lot. We've seen better, you know, we see stranger things. Nick, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, just an awesome day of poker. You know, the field was sick. Um, and what a way to end the day with Jared Jardine here in the box with us. Jared, thank you for your time. You could have gone and done anything else you wanted to do in this casino, but you chose to be here with us. And uh, this is what we love about what we do. We really appreciate you coming up here. And uh, to the viewers, tomorrow we seem to start according to the program at 11.30 in the morning. So please do feel free to join us and don't miss out on this action of the high rally event. Cheers for now. Cheers, guys.